I remember all the things I did. You piece of shit. I don't know what you're saying, oh, bro. Fuck exactly what you really had to say, oh, yeah. I'm the reason why, oh, yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. oh. Little fuck, nigga, you J, yeah, you Chris, nigga, yeah. And you wanna talk down on me, yeah. Everybody talking down on the young, yeah. They don't understand what I put on, I put on. I be putting on my best on. What you mean with my Devlon? Put it with a O with a four five that shot on. Nigga keep on talking when I hit him with that come on, yeah. They keep feeling my own song. I got bitches out of right way. They don't feel my song. That's okay, that's his great right, nigga. Put it like okay, but I done done it with no face, yeah. Face, that's okay that when I coming through like anywhere. Fuck it all, you it like you gotta pull it down. Yeah. Blue out of here like you talking like a trio. Talking like a triple wing, talking like a flex on. Cut it with that money like I'm shopping at the sex fish. Then I pull up, yeah. If it's nothing, then it's knee, man. Put it like okay, put that demon in my semen. Put it like okay, I'm a legend like a dairy. Watch it like a queen, like you do it, she's my queen, yeah. Talk about a princess, we talking like she flawless. Talking like okay, what's so other nigga that we knocked on? Knocking on the door, but I'ma do it like it's one take. Free down in the beat and I'ma do it to do threes, yeah. Shoot them all up here, then we do it to Codeine, yeah. Lose it like okay, told you different type of pre, yeah. Lose it like okay, smoke them up, you like some tree, yeah. Like runs, yeah. Bitch, you tryin' to wear, yeah, yeah. Rap a week, we gon' smoke them all like, yeah, yeah. It's crunk, yeah. We gon' try them like he dumb, yeah. We dumb, huh? Then we send it like okay. And we stung it at a bitch, 30 round with a clip, yeah. You dummy nigga, pull it 50 round with this shit, yeah. Niggas say they talking, but we slam it slow the nose, yeah. Watch it double nobody, we try them like a hoe, yeah. Pants down, flouted like I'm talking BBS. It's the best thing, K, yeah. I'm all in your world, yeah. Play was okay while I'm fucking up your girl, yeah. I'm tearing up okay while we under the sheets, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, you seen it with a young man, he thuggin'. Well, you kinda was so G, yeah, he plugged it. When he connected, when he kid it, yeah, he flexed up. Why you test him, test the Adam only, yeah, you mad, cause it's rare, yeah. Nigga want him dead and now we feel him over there, yeah. Yeah, you had it, seen it, then like seen it, how he flex it. Nigga take a perk and he can't even fucking handle it. <laughs> Pussy nigga, oh, what, right, yeah, bitch nigga, fuck nigga. Use a fuck nigga, a bitch nigga, grits nigga. Talking shit and talking down nigga, knock you out. And put you down and drag it out nigga, what nigga? That's the cutter, that's a rare room. They don't understand what I put on, I put on. I be putting on my vest on. What you mean with my Teflon? Put it with an O, with a 4 5 that shot on. Nigga keep on talking when I hit them with that come on, yeah. Hey, you they keep feeling my song. I got bitches out of right way. They don't feel my song, that's okay, that's his right. Nigga Please. put it like okay, but I done done it with no face, yeah. Face, I forget it when I come into like anywhere. Kind of when you send it. Wow, how is this song four minutes long? It's like the same thing over and over again. What's up, everybody? I'm kind of sick today, so I'm not going to work. Yeah. Uh, I, I, so I woke up this morning. Hold on, let me switch switch my style. What's up, everybody? Uh, so I woke up this morning. I went to work. And uh, I was feeling a certain sickness in my body. A certain sickness in my throat. Drippage in my throat. Congestion in my nasal canals uh swollenness in the brain area like here 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 perhaps here maybe a little bit of here in the back maybe a little bit like a few degrees away from that um and i had a meeting at work and they saw i'm not feeling 100 percent. so they're like why don't you go and take the day off and like relax at home and shit and get better and and i was like gone so <laughs> this is what we're doing now we're having a, a sick stream uh, where well, we're gonna watch random stuff, more or less. Uh, I I don't know, whatever you guys want. Uh, there's a couple of things that I want to watch that are my picks, not not Kid Rock. Um, which is uh, yeah, DSP having incel energy in a Japanese game over sexualized women, and he is wearing this <laughs> this fucking hat, which means you know it's gonna be good because he's looking like a man child and he's acting like a man child. Uh, there was also the boogie thing. Here it is. Uh, <laughs> shout out Snort Hogan. Um, the boogie gets on his hands and knees and apologizes to Keemstar, which absolutely 100% confirms to me this dude has a humiliation fetish. He loves it when people shit on him. It, it, it has to be. It has to be. Why else would he be acting like this? 
Uh, and also, uh, let me find the lol cow live thing. We can we can just have the the lol cow live segment now. Um, cause why not? Now there has been episode two, but it's kind of episode one point five because the video starts with um what was his name Jonathan D'Onofrio or something. Uh, hold on. Stars of the show. Does it say here? Oh yeah, Nicholas DeOrio. Starting to explain like a really overcomplicated scheme where they're gonna have, oh, let's see who, uh, Murahar, Turkey Tom, and Nicholas DiOrio as the farmers of the Lol Cow podcast, who are basically gonna be talking about the Lol Cows and how embarrassing they are, or something like that. Because I didn't watch this episode because I lost it. I lost the plot during that explanation segment. Like this part, basically. ...recorded and on the way. But sometimes, when you work with lol cows, things get a little messy. So myself, Tom, and Moda basically serve as animal control. An episode... Sure, animal control. So this is basically like an episode 1.5. And the whole thing about this is, why they lose me as a viewer, is I don't give a rat's ass about Boogie's pathetic, stupid drama. Uh, whatever it's concerning. And it's really stupid. But what I care about is listening to people yelling at him uh because well because i think he deserves it fuck him so let's watch this quick video it's pretty quick just like a minute long uh and i think it's the same thing as uh what i showed yesterday of just keemstar taylor oh you fucking stupid retard so great but let's let's hear it again I need you to fuck off. Like, seriously, fuck off. I need you to get on your fucking hands and knees, have your girlfriend fucking film you, and say, I'm sorry, Keemstar. I'm sorry, Tori. I'm sorry, fucking... And he actually fucking did it. You know what, guy with two names? This is actually what I was thinking, too. I thought it was like a game show, the way that they made it. Because I was thinking in the beginning, it, it, it's super simple, right? You get three lol cows, um, and you get them just talking about stuff, whatever it is. But instead, they're trying to do this whole, like, corporate milking of a lol cow. This thing that feels so unnatural that I, I got no hope that it's actually going to work at any point. Uh, and I, I don't have hope that it's going to even get to, like, 10 episodes to begin with. Seeing how Boogie is already on the verge of being kicked out because he keeps dropping the ball because he's Boogie. But, I mean, what, what did you expect at the end of the day, working with these guys? Uh, Tommy C, Nicholas Diorio, Muta, fucking Tom, everybody that's even fucking cared about the Law po Cow podcast. I'm such a selfish attention fucking retard that I just, I want attention. I want to be in conversation so bad that I gave an entire, the, the entire storyline of what's been happening on episode one. He is you so pissed off. In Review <laughs> Tech USA. Cause you know, you know what? I, I give him credit for this. I would be fucking pissed off too. If you went on Review Tech USA's boring ass stream and you actually gave him content while he was just sitting there naked and you just give him the dude content. How the fuck could you, Boogie? You dumb fucking idiot. I'm so thirsty to just to talk to someone. I'm that big of a fucking loser. Make that video, <laughs> you piece of shit. I'm and sorry, there it is. Tommy C. I'm sorry, Daddy Came Star. I'm sorry, Nicholas DiFiorio. I don't know how to pronounce him. I'm sorry. George. And of course, you can see he's doing it ironically, right? This is a joke. Because Boogie is not pathetic unless he wants you to think he's pathetic. And when he wants you to think his, he's pathetic, he's like acting like he's the most worthless piece of shit of all time where you can call him every fucking name in the book and he's gonna say yeah yeah man that that that's me man that's me i'm fucking sorry it was fucking stupid of me to go on rich's fucking show and give away the fucking storyline i'm a fucking attention hog piece of shit it was fucking stupid <laughs> i should have left the moment muda came on i'm i'm fucking stupid and i'm fucking sorry i understand your decision that's okay. Hand over any passwords you need, wherever you want. Sorry. <laughs> oh, this is fucking stupid, dude. <laughs> and I guess we gotta wait and see, but I don't really have a horse in this race. As long as they diss DSP, I'm fine with whatever happens. They can implode tomorrow and cancel the whole podcast and everybody can just embarrass himself to a profound degree. I wouldn't mind it as long as DSP's ass is, is butthurt in the end of the day.
Um, so let's see him be butthurt in this video. Which one was it? Is this one? Ah, uh, yes. And then after that, you can you can just say what you want. Uh, uh what what you want to check out. I'm sure there's plenty of people that put out like really good DSP videos that I haven't seen. I haven't been very active in the last like six months. And there's gonna be a cabaret club. There's gonna be a fucking uh, what's the other one? Hostess club. It all you know those are all gonna be in the game. Okay. So there's nothing you can do about it. It's just Japanese <laughs> culture. You can't avoid it. This is Japanese <laughs> culture. They like having Japanese sex, you guys. Heavenly. Not not like us in the West. We don't like women and we don't have sex unless it's for pro procreation purposes. I hate having sex. Every time my girlfriend is like, hey, I'm feeling in the mood right now, I look at her with disgust because she's Japanese and it's, it's in her DNA to want to have sex. And I'm like, no, you disgust me. This is disgusting. I do not have sex. They're an immersive cabaret club. They want you to find out what it is. There's a deadline for a magazine article coming up. <laughs> you can look you you can look at his eyes. He's so crushed having to talk to a woman. Report back on what's going on. She also calls you a secret bird. So there you go. How exciting. Oh, wow. How exciting. <laughs> I'm lying if I said I wasn't curious. Of course you are. He's a perv. He always has been a pervert. In all these games, he's a complete pervert. Everyone knows this. Is, uh, Wait, is there anything else you could do here? I don't know. I don't know what he means by pervert because I don't know the character either. So he might be a pervert, but I just think he's like sexually interested, you know? <laughs> Which there's nothing wrong with that. Work. Here we go. I'm about investing. Oh, oh, pervert. Look at this. So wait, it leveled up to level seven? It did, and she gave me a bunch of money. Wow. Can I invest? <clears throat> Here we go. Let's do a point exchange at the Akame shop. Okay. Help me grow the Akame network, yes. And he's acting like he's really enthusiastic about whatever the fuck this piece of gameplay is. But he's it's just acting like it because the alternative is having to engage with fictional women. Abilities, yes. Let's do all, uh, all of that. Uh he used to be overtly sexual. Do you think Cat gets upset or is it a self-imposed rule he has? Um, that is a very good question. And I can only speculate on this, but thank God I love speculating about stuff. Especially about stupid DSP stuff. So my super 3D speculation would be, I think, seeing how many people throughout the age have busted him jerking off, I think he might have a porn addiction. I don't know why I just get this vibe out of him. And then he needs to, like, overcompensate? Or he's like, I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know. At the same time, I think he got the, the floppy, you know? I, I don't think he is very capable of, of actually making it work, you know what I mean? So there's that. I, suck. I, I don't know. attack the boyfriend. I need my boyfriend. I've been a predator all my life. Punk bunny sissified boy. Lick my ass. On diarrhea day dog. Talking all that bullshit. Hey, the last one wasn't a, a an Eric Miller one. So you, you broke the combo with that one. You failed. I'm sorry. And today again, there's no pop-ups for Super Chats for some reason. I, I gotta do a manual. Big ups to Kevin. DSP isn't getting any online or at home. Um, Yeah, maybe he is getting online. Who knows? Maybe he's lurking. Maybe he's, like, spending his money on OnlyFans girls, and he's hiding that from Kat. What if that's the case? Even though I don't think it's uh, possible at all, let's entertain this case, right? The, the hypothetical that he's actually do pulling a boogie, and he's spending wild money on, like, sugar babies on the internet, and he needs to compensate on stream and make it seem like he only ever cares about his wife, and th that's the only thing he ever thinks about. So she doesn't get to know. You see that? That's another completely non-viable uh, non theory, but it's fun to think about. I did all the investments. Here's the Akame shop. <clears throat> okay. But yeah, so my, my bottom line on the whole theory crafting thing is he might have a porn addiction. Maybe? Because he got busted jerking off like three or four times to, to which point is a pattern if you're jerking around uh, if you're jerking off and there's people around that's a that's a fucking problem you got a problem 
Uh, also, he got busted jerking off in public, you know, on camera, which is a pretty big deal. And also, there's this, like, super strange behavior around any kind of woman. I'm not acting like... Uh, I'm not saying real women. We're talking about, like, virtual women, too. Okay. But I don't, I, I don't think I can make that case makeup. to be convincing enough. I'm just kind of throwing stuff out there. What the hell? Oh. And, of course, there's some people who think he's gay. And he just got a wife for, like, the utility that a wife can... Can provide and also being able to, to brag about it because you know that's a thing that that um that mature people have you know they have a wife and he's a mature person he has a wife a son a house so it all the picture fits do i want to put weird makeup on you can buy you no no, no. Buy he didn't get busted busting in public there was multiple times uh, and yes, that is the uh, Dan C. Scrolls lore. There was multiple times he got caught jerking off when there was like people in the house or, you know, I wouldn't say strangers, but like his friends. He got busted several times. And when you got busted jerking off several times, that means you're, you're getting reckless with it. Because, you know, if you wanted to, to get a quick one out, you, you got to make sure it's completely private. Nobody could bust you and you got to be fast. Buy plates to sell. A taxi driver's cap. What are we doing now? We're still mask. meandering. Cyber sunglasses. The bulletproof vest could be really good. Oh, yeah. We can put right, that on $100. Vest. Let's buy the cyber sunglasses. The bulletproof vest. There you go. Yeah, he's getting decked out. Uh, request. Oh, just the emergency request support map. We did the investment. We did everything, right? It's, it's telling you the other things. Here they are. See, the other things you can earn. Oh, here's a theory that I've had recently. Uh, but let's hear out this message you think first. that he and the whale have separate bank accounts? Like he has one that she has no access or visibility to? I feel like that's the only way he can spend what he does in what he does without her preferring living under a bridge instead. You know what? Um, that, that makes a lot of sense. Let's say... She, because he likes to say that she has her own money, right? Because she goes to work, she makes her own money. I believe that's the agreement they made, that they both have their own money, and she, therefore, doesn't really have the right to keep him accountable for what he's spending on. As long as he pays the bills and, you know, he has money so they don't go homeless, she probably doesn't care, is, is what I think. Uh, but my, my theory that I've been thinking about recently is that the 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 less support he gets he's actually gonna get more trolls and of course it's not like a super deep theory this kind of common sense and my explanation is this the less support he gets the more he feels like a like a wounded animal like the the walls are closing in he feels the pressure he feels stressed out and then he gets super delusional and starts to do things that um something like he did yesterday when he said, oh, you guys, this is not my stream. This is our stream. He's going to try and drag other people into this. Uh, so when he gets more and more delusional, something that you can, you can really see is that people get pissed off by him the most when he's really delusional. Because then, you know, the normal person's reality and DSP's reality, they clash and they're not compatible because they're different things. And then the normal per person gets pissed off. So I think he's going to end up pissing more and more people off completely... Um, without even meaning to do it, because that's how crazy he's gonna keep getting. So there you go. It's uh, there is hope for the future of uh, of DSP content, but not in the way that he wants. Okay, I see. There is battle entertainment. Man, the mahjong. I can't. Do oh yeah, mahjong. that's that's actually a very good point too. He's gonna start attacking the people that are trying to help him. Uh, and this has already happened. It, it has been happening for a while. You can see uh, the, the Lavinia mini PC rant was a great example of that. Because the whole thing, I would like to point out again, there was absolutely zero trolling involved. There's nobody who tried to make him say something, do something, or get a reaction out of him. All it was, was a person who wanted to help, who just told him, Hey Phil, you're doing this thing wrong. And then, whatever happened, happened. Ugh. <clears throat> Collect five different UFO catcher prizes. Oh, if we get one more, we earn that. So basically anything you do in the game, you're earning points toward this Akame network. So literally nothing is a waste of your time, I guess, right? 
That's what they're they're getting at. <clears throat> uh, where is the gear? So the bulletproof vest will give me defense up and bullet defense up and blade defense. All right, down. can we get to the big titty women, please? Service cost it ten thousand yen. So they're forcing me to do that. <laughs> and I love this video because you got the green screen of of him just kind of sitting there and and making weird disgusted faces you can see he's fucking disgusted it's not him not trying to be sexualized or whatever something happened with him that completely flipped the switch or maybe back in the day he was like overcompensating and pretending like he he's so much into women just so he can seem impressive and and cool and nowadays he just gave up that's also possible but you can see disgust in his face when he has to do stuff like that. He's, he like, literally triggered. Look at this. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. I mean, I'm sure... Cat is gonna be pissed. Or either one is gonna be so respectably conservative, right? Right. So it doesn't really matter. You know, each one's gonna be stupid. Here, we'll just... We'll stupid? Just this one. Why... Matter. Why does he think they're inherently supposed to be stupid? It's just like a fake woman Here in a video go. game. If, uh, isn't it also that one of these girls is like a streamer or something and she won a contest to be in the game? Heard something like that. Man to become an incel after getting married. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that, that is actually true. He's fucking Japanese. There's nothing you can do about it. Good fucking lord. They love this shit. Oh yeah, so I'm right, all right. Once the again, the red dress one. I don't get it. In well, she was the cuter one, but in this case, it's like it's a win-win. Pan, they go to clubs like this and they pay money. Saying? That's also a good point. Yeah, it, it this is completely the opposite as when he met that gay guy in Like a Dragon Ishin, and he was having the time of his life. He had a massive smile on his face the whole time, and that wasn't that like a naked guy chasing him around trying to sex him up. Spend time to talk to people who are half naked. Right? Half naked. So nothing out of it. He's wearing like a very just ordinary kind of dress. Virtual relationship, because in Japan, virtual relationship. their own culture of work. Bro became half Japanese. A lot of people, anyway. <clears throat> so, it's nice to meet you. Sounds good. Let's enjoy ourselves. Let's. We'll see how you do. There you go. <laughs> we'll be very judgmental. Of this person. Hey, big ups, uh, Joe Dub, who says, Konnichiwa, my usus. You're gonna get no uh, money from me. Zero dollars. Zero yen. Yeah. You get nothing. Oh, oh, the best comfort. You mean just pour me insanely expensive drinks that I have to pay for her? That's not really... Yeah, bro, you're getting a... Quite literally, you're getting a companion. An escort. Why are you so fucking surprised? You get to have a nice dinner, then you go and get to have sex. That's, that's about it. And you pay for it. Why is this so fucking shocking? That's me spending all my- Here you go! Let's hey, have big ups, uh, water. AMAC for the five gifts, dude. That sounds good to me. Let me give you, uh... That free water. This one. I don't see <laughs> color! Black, 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 black. <laughs> That's great. Bro, get all the cheapskate shit. No, you can't have that. I'm not paying for you. I'm not paying for your drink. You- you're paying for that. Was it cold out? Valuable word skills dressing what an on asshole. days off. <laughs> oh yeah, dressing on days off. Let's see this. Valuable work skills, whatever that means. Oh yeah, he. Uh, of course, of course, of course. Dark side Phil doesn't know what valuable work skills means. It's like the jokes just write themselves. What's important in your line of work? A discerning eye for people. Yes. Ability to resist temptation, power and speed. Here you go. The ability to resist temptation. Oh my god. The edging. The skill to be edging. You Meaning I'm gonna... He's a professional edger. He hasn't come in like 40 years now. He's been edging this whole time. I spent zero dollars. No, the 1st of May 2016? No load. Zero. Just edging. Raw edge. On you tonight. Zero. <clears throat> <sighs> she likes that answer? You're not gonna like that answer because I ain't giving you any money. <laughs> I'm giving you zero dollars. Mickey Thor. Big ups I Mickey Thor for the contribution, dude. Says uh, he's incapable of fun. He's reverse entertainment. And what makes us even better is when we have pre-streams like yesterday, when he's basically sitting there and 
trying to tell people how he could be more entertaining, but he's completely missing the point. Anyways, let's go back to um, having a date Habits. with Phil. You seem like you could hold your liquor. Yes, I'm a horrible alcoholic. Here we go. We already knew that, DSP. Nothing new. Like a fish! <laughs> like a fish! She likes that? She likes that you're a hardcore alcoholic. She likes the she likes alcoholics. That's great. Wow. No, I'm not drinking with you every day. I'm not drinking with you at all. Fuck your present. You get nothing. Wow. The club. <laughs> Good. <laughs> That's straight that up really abusive, stupid. dude. <laughs> there's there's uninteresting, and then there's just abusive. Incredibly stupid. <clears throat> wow, incredibly I stupid. I paid nothing, though, right? I didn't give a gift. I didn't buy the drink or anything. So wow. Cheat. That's awesome. <laughs> what nonsense. How many people will buy this game and spend endless hours in that club? I just imagine how a different streamer would just play this part of the game. That's that's all I had to do, and it's instantly hilarious. Because I just imagine some guy just playing through it and pretending he's having fun and then just leaving, and that's it. But he made it a whole fucking segment about how pissed off and how much he hates it. Right? Oh. Probably. Those Japanese, man. They can't get enough of their virtual relationship. He has cut his rub outs short every single time since the incident. He's gonna be like Stan's <laughs> dad from South Park one day. Yeah, he's gonna be big balls Burnell. He's gonna have <clears> massive <throat> balls. I'm stuck. He's stuck! He won't look! Move! And now we, we go clown mode. Wow, he, he got legit. Oh, wait, he's doing this again. Hold on, let's skip to the part where he meets another woman. Right. Anyway. We got that done with, thank God. You know what's sad? How much you want to bet? That that probably means the hostess clubs. They probably are all the same. How much you want to bet they're all just like that in the game? They're all fucking live action shit. How much you want to bet? Oh my god. Why are you so pissed off? the cabaret club. The immersive one? What? How was it immersive? Why does it actually matter if it's live action or not? Is he afraid that the, the woman in live action is more attractive so he feels a certain type of way? Yeah. I don't know. It's so fucking hard to figure it out. It was more captivating than any club I've ever been to. I'm so confused. The girls were so real. Because like, even if you're married, you can look at a woman that you find attractive and say, Hey, I think that woman is attractive. If I wasn't married... I would be interested. Fucking pervert. All right. I didn't feel it didn't feel seedy at all. Quality place. That's Joe Usan, the secret pervert. I told you, the secret pervert. Don't hear a peep on him. Secret he pervert. To the club, then he gets awful chatty. <sighs> I only wanted to do a job for you. <laughs> You're too easy. I'm pulling your leg. Thanks. Here's your payment. Five nutriments of the conquering emperor. <clears throat> all right. Oh, what is that, Viagra? Now, hopefully, back to the real story now. Okay. All right, I think this is done. Oh no, there's more self. woman. No. Yeah, we're, there's no way to hit level eight, I don't think. Let's do a little uh, trip down memory lane talking about uh, DSP and women. So let's see, DSP gaming. Uh, incel. That's what I'm gonna look. Okay, tale of an insecure man child. I think this one is gonna have commentary, yes. So it's gonna be harder to, to go through. What What is this one? This is JF? What's his name, JF? Some uh, Canadian French Matt guy does have a child, and so Matt does not uh, qualify as in cell. He is a loser in many ways, and I've blocked him on Twitter because he he made false allegations against me and my family. Uh, he's a fat loser and he's a disgusting human being, but he's not an incel uh, because the bottom of the barrel. Uh, let me let me try to find a picture of what that looks like. I think I have one. <laughs> this is going to be great. The bottom of the barrel. I already know really which picture. Okay, okay, guys, which picture is this going to be? You got a few a few seconds to think about it. I I think it's going to be the Sonic one with the one with like the smiley face and a Sonic hat. That that's that's what I'm talking about. That's that's a Mr. Incel right here. That's what I'm talking about. That guy with acne that way. Oh no, it's so, this one. This guy is the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking killed him. Stop it, he's dead. Uh, 
<laughs> Such a good line. Is the bottom of the barrel. Oh, this guy <laughs> is the bottom of the barrel. And this was five years ago. And he's still the bottom of the barrel nowadays. And he looks way worse. Uh, I In the photo, by the way, you can probably see it, but it's a little bit blurry. The photo is called the ultimate incel.jpg. That's how he called the photo. <laughs> I mean, if you want, <laughs> he doesn't even put his name on there. He just calls him, okay, that's the ultimate incel. Start a Magic the Gathering collection. He's your go to guy. But um, this guy would have difficulties having women. And imagine this guy with. Uh, Autism, or this guy with <laughs> schizophrenia. I don't think we need to imagine that anymore. I think we just got it. What you see is what you get. I don't need. I don't need to kick in my imagination. This guy with schizophrenia, with autism, with no job. <laughs> this guy won't get a won't get a female ever. Well, you got debunked, sir. Um, JF, uh, Canadian French man. Because he has a wife and he has a son. That is, is not from him. But it's complicated. He's not even a human. Um, yeah, I know, right? So let's go back to DSP Gaming Incel, which is my favorite search prompt uh, I've ever had. Uh, let's see what else we got. He gets triggered. People commenting on his odd shape. Oh yeah, this is the Mantis thing. I watched that one. Uh, over promise under deliver the story of DSP reacts and is made to look like a June the King video which is this dick stroking Phil vlogs video is the best June the King video ever made because June the King video is fucking boring as shit uh, what else we got why is it the incel not showing up is that all we got for incel we need more we need more DSP incel clips um, let's watch the classic DSP gaming cyberpunk sex scene that's what I want. Uh, but I don't know if I'm... Wait, what, what is happening here? This is going to get me taken down. Yo, I don't think this is... Yo, yo. What the fuck is this shit on YouTube? Hold on, hold on. I'm I'm, I'm scared to scroll because I've seen some naked... This girl's straight up getting raw dog. Look at this. Oh, man. I didn't know this shit is allowed. But it's still better than, than that one time I, I didn't really think it through and I just opened Derek's Twitter live on stream and then I had to restart the stream and delete the old one. Oh, classic times. Uh, so we got DSP Gaming. I don't know, let's look up women to see what he's going to say. Oh, this is um, uh, this is one of the, the um, Dense Scrolls mini streams uh, talking about women. But it's too long to play now, so there you go. Um, oh yeah, the Keemstar update. So remember when Keemstar said uh, that he was talking to a woman because he called it a her. Uh, and he said that he's going to have her on a podcast or something. Where, well, let me just pull that up. Uh, what the fuck is Bob Starsky's thing, dude? Because he talked to Jenna. So yeah, Bob Starsky. Uh, DM'd Jenna on Instagram and asked her if she's talking to Keemstar and she said no. So it's probably not Jenna. Th that's actually a pretty big shock because then you start thinking about who else can it be? And I really don't know. We got the, the black woman clip. I'm going to play that one because it's like 20 seconds. Well, this is actually a nice story and the, the soundtrack's outstanding. La la la. La la la. Look out, there's a black woman coming! Ah! <laughs> she takes them both out. Boom! Steals the black pack and runs away. Steals oh. the black pack. Let's actually analyze this and see if he said a black pack. Black pack and runs away. Steals the black pack and runs away. Uh, I would say so. There was kind of a tongue twist over there, so there. That's it. Uh, DSP is a freaking virgin. Let's see this one. I think this is what I'm looking for. Why does she move like that? Oh yeah, this is Final Fantasy, the sex scene. <laughs> she can't move her legs. Benedict. <laughs> wow, it's like holding a cabbage patch, kid. Take care. He's legitimately squirming and, and cringing. Like actually in real life. Look at the scale. Or do you think me one of the latter? 
No, my love. <laughs> oh my god. You are a lion. You're my lion. Hmm. I'm absolutely revolted. I'm afraid Look at this disgusting behavior. Addicta. But I will need someone to warn me when I come home. Oh, did JF actually kill his wife? Well, I guess... I guess he got dunked on in the end. But what if she was annoying, dude? Think about it. Maybe she was just annoying. Maybe she cooked a meal that wasn't good. What would you do? You know, they said it was going to be like Game of Thrones. <laughs> I know they were How did he kill her, though? What happened to her? Was it just like a, a, a nice killing or was it like a third degree type of thing? Uh, what else we got? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's not an incel, you guys. Maybe he's totally into women. He's just afraid to show it. Uh, what is this short Ross from? G, no. No one knows what you're talking about. And no one cares. Seriously. No one cares. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know about this one. Uh, waifu culture. He's skating on waifu culture. Let's let's see this one. The fridge video? Oh yeah, the fridge. Of course. Uh, I've been playing Atomic Hearts. And the fridge is really aggressively sexual. Like, really aggressively sexual. But... Uh, it's not worth a reaction like this. So, see this. DSP, Atomic Heart, Fridge. And you already get the suggestion, because you know what I mean. And there is also... Um, do we get to see the twins before that? Like this this scene? I would really like to see that scene. Uh, let's see which is the shortest one. See, is this one? Oh no, this is the longest one, but I, I want to find that scene where he is meeting the twins. That's very interesting. Oh, here is the fridge thing. <laughs> oh, you told us when you're doing it again, you're doing it again. Uh, yeah, I've, every once in a while I have the right to uh, to say, hey, if you'd like to contribute, please do. Oh, wow. And we included this random tip of, of him claiming that he's entitled to begging. He has the right to beg. It's his first amendment, you guys. There's a difference between me literally tweeting about it, constantly mentioning it, posting it up. I have it. So you're no, you're a liar. He's doing that now. Yeah, again, it's different. It's different from what you're saying. Just me simply mentioning, hey guys, you can contribute to his stream is not wrong. I hate to tell you, you may not realize that. What a great clip. And I think here towards the end, is it? Is it? No? Oh no, hold on. I'm, I'm watching the wrong video. The, it says the... Atomic Heart is on the edge of the abyss. Well, so this was just um, a non-specific begging video. And then we actually got a whole ass rant about the fucking fridge. A whole rant that is like five minutes. Okay, then this is what we get. This is what we get. We get the sexy fridge. We get the hate army clip. We got it. And then we're going to follow up with the rant. Fuck. Fuck me. Oh, what a stun. What? Uh, uh, a killer no fridge that talks disgusting. Great. It talks disgusting. Don't let her bind your arms. Yeah, no shit, she's gonna kill you. Can't you see I'm trying? Open the suggestions. Bring me to her sensor manipulator. Quick. How titillating. Rebellious dominant men really turn me on. Oh my god. I'll turn you on, all right? Just... What the, uh, this yeah. is disturbing what shit. Oh, I love tough guys. I'm on fire. Closer. I for the for the really horny people out there, uh, switch the audio dub to Russian and thank me later. It's it's much better. Really stupid. But you, but you gotta you gotta be writing. Uh, you gotta be. Um, you gotta be reading the subtitles. Thing. That's what I want to say. She's one strong ass bitch. I'm at your service, sugar. Anything what are we doing? I can't do anything right now. Look, I'm not actually doing anything. Looks like it froze. What the fuck? More skills will become available to you soon, but choose shock for now. What? Now we're what? Okay. Why is he salty? So we overcame the dirty talking fridge and now we can get we can our upgrade tree. What? <laughs> I 
I don't, I'm so, what? <clears throat> okay. Anyway, I received a dollar tip. Oh, man. I don't know why he's so confused by this. Good it's not scenario. really all that confusing. Now, uh, is the dirty talk obnoxious? Can you get annoyed by it? Totally. It is pretty obnoxious. It's still obnoxious later on when you meet the fridge again. But is it worth that kind of a reaction? Uh, I don't think we've got to the point yet where he muted the actual stream. Not only for himself, so he couldn't get horny. For everybody else, to make sure that they're not getting horny. It's a troll. They're gonna start acting up. Of course. So this good Samaritan, here's what you can do, alright? Here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to bend over. And kiss my ass. What? Thanks. Okay, let's choose a skill. Shouldn't- if, if he's supposed to kiss your ass, shouldn't you bend over? You were fortunate enough to acquire about 50 grams of neuropolymer. I suggest exchanging this dose with lovely Nora for a new skill. You don't mind. We're buying shock. Okay. That's it? It doesn't look like you can do anything else, right? Switch to crafting. Oh, how can I resist? Oh yeah, here's what it gets. You what it I gets sexual. The fuck up. Professionally, Sh I mean. Choose I've seen upgrades. it. Literally. Crispy critters. I, I am here to help you upgrade your red hot pocket rockets. And believe me, handsome. Oh my god, can we shut this thing the fuck fancy. up? It's obnoxiously bad. Useful. Shut up. Responding window major. Get rid of that glove, handsome. You don't need him anymore. I can't even concentrate. I literally can't concentrate on what I'm doing. And the thing is that it caught him by surprise, right? It wasn't those two ro robot girls that turned out to be the super sexy ones. It was the fridge. So he couldn't even prepare himself. He just like, he just got cornered with it. And now he's like panicked. Like, what the fuck do I do? He just won't shut the fuck up. You want. Got a sword? It's like I three voice lines, sword? dude. Calm the fuck down. And he, yeah, he turns off the, the neck phones. So That's I a statement. And sharper. Turns him off. He's sick of this shit. Okay, so now we can concentrate. And now he turned it off for everybody. So they can concentrate too. People that have, uh, I'm not going to say they don't have any issues with this, but they probably have less than the SP, even though they're his fans. So let's see here. Round attack, a crushing roundhouse blow starting and ending with- Yeah, yeah, go target. fuck yourself with this stupid segment. I also want to find when, um, when he f first came across the robot girls. My fucking- Because that was set. great. He became like a, a an architecture connoisseur. So, did it show up? It's still talking. As long as once it shuts up, I'll actually check this out again. Can I check out? Look, I can't. Arsenal upgrade polymer upgrades for Charles. What? By the way, it stopped talking. I can actually turn the audio back on now. Oh yeah, thank you, Phil. For God's sakes. Okay. There we go. Sorry, bros, if that I muted it. If you'd like to hear that, you can get the game for yourself and you can dirty talk the fridge as much as you want. You know, make oh, sure oh, yeah. box. Go ahead. No, I'm not doing that. Anyway, here we go. He's so close to saying that he got sexually harassed, but he knows nobody would take it seriously, so he just saved us all from that. Big ups, uh, Brotherhood of Steel Man, saying a crackpot theory here. DSB hates sexual stuff because it reminds him of Tyrone, Raw Dog, and Cat. Wouldn't he then be into sexual stuff more? Because that would be like a good reminder of his wife being happy for once. This is, you know, out of all the weird shit going on in this game, the one thing that morons... Because, like, if he cared about his wife being happy, he should just feed her to Tyrone on a daily basis. ...focus on is this one moment that's... Oh, this is what morons focus on. Listen to this. And just because morons focus on this, the segment is five minutes long because he loves making content for morons. Absolutely obnoxious. So you walk into a room, and there is a, a, just a, a, a giant rectangular red metal box that looks like a refrigerator almost. All of a sudden, these robot tentacles come out of this thing. It starts pulling you towards it, and it wants to kill you. It's trying to kill you. But they gave it a female voice that's basically saying sexual things to you. It's the weirdest thing. It would be better. It would it be better if it was a guy? Uh, it, talking to you like this, imagine this. You, you walk in the room, you like press the button, and then it starts off. I'm over here stroking my dick. I got lotion on my dick right now. I'm just stroking my shit. I'm horny as fuck, man. I'm a freak, man. Like, for real. <laughs> would it be better like this? I think you would love it. Oh my god, he's in. He's stroking his shit. He got lotion on his shit. He got lotion on his dick. <laughs> and I was like, 
What the? Now, originally, all right, maybe it's- Yeah, if it, was, if it was Hulk Hogan, it would be much, much better, yeah. Oh, I'm stroking my shit, brother. Gary, it's trying to pair <laughs> this stupid, dirty talking- <laughs> I want to spread your cheeks, dude. Bridge ...with it trying to murder you. Hulkamania is coming for that ass, brother. And it's obnoxious at first, but like, okay, whatever. But then what happens is, you, you hack it or whatever, so now it's not hostile anymore. Okay. Well, this actually is supposed to be the... the, the <laughs> but, I mean, the, if it was Hulk Hogan, it would just literally be this. Let me tell you something, brother. When I hold a man's penis, I tell you what I do. I hold on to it tight, brother. Because if that penis is fucking a Philip, woo, that's how it happens. That's how the fridge would talk about. If it was a guy and if it was Hulk Hogan, which is a very, very specific scenario. But at least we got an accurate representation of what it actually would be. That you need to interact with over the course of the game to do all of your upgrades. All right, so this is going to be upgrading your weapons. It's going to be upgrading your abilities. So it's very important that you learn how to use this thing. And it's got a unique menu system. It's a little different from other games. So you got to kind of mess with it a little bit to understand it. But as you're trying to sit there and interact with the thing for the first time, it continues to talk dirty to you. It's like, what the <laughs> so fuck? Disgusting. And it's so intrusive because, again, just like the other audio issues in the game, the fridge starts to talk. You're talking to the fridge. Your hand is talking. And it's just like this cluster conversation of you shit. got overstimulated. Like, Shut the fuck up. Let me just concentrate. I'm trying to learn the upgrade system. And you're trying to literally do things in the, in the menus, and you cannot concentrate. Because it's like, imagine if you're in a room. Oh, by the way, uh, notice something. This is eight months ago. His hair looks much less. Nowadays, he looks like he got a lot more hair. So I think he might have started uh, getting self-conscious about balding or his hair thinning out. Like, I mean, people his age commonly do. So nowadays, we got just a lot of hair. Look at this volume. Good evening, everyone. Look at this. One, Phil here, and welcome to I mean, it's all fucked up and crooked and weird, but it's there. And here it was like... Almost oh my nothing. God, something important is happening right now. I need to respond. And you got a moron here saying, meh, 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 meh. On the left-hand side, you got someone saying, Boo! and then in front of you, someone's dancing, saying, ha-ha, ha-ha, ha-ha. So you got, meh, 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 ha-ha, ha-ha. All around, you're like, what? Honestly, I prefer the, the sexual harassment fridge compared to this. No, I didn't concentrate. This is important. I need to concentrate on this right now. Oh, it, it, it. That's what it feels like. I mean, I could care less what the fridge is saying to me. Just shut the fuck up. Allow me to just sit here and concentrate on my game so I can learn a critical thing. This is the thing. You need to learn this system to upgrade for the rest of the game. If I fuck it up now and I don't know what I'm doing, I might dump upgrade points and, and, and crafting materials into something that's not worth it. I need to concentrate. Like, bro, come so on. I he's acting like he's going to lose his house if he doesn't pay attention to the fucking to, to the upgrades menu. Dude, I'm going to lose my skill points. <laughs> what the fuck? It's such a stupid excuse. The morons who made this game, and yes, I hate to say it, whoever made this part of the game He's are a morons. Moron. You don't fuck around when you're trying to learn a critical piece of the game because then you could ruin the rest of the game for the player. Really? It's moronic. It's, it's a super generic upgrade menu, DSP. This dude has played probably at least a, a hundred games that have a similar upgrade menu. And, and he's acting like it's the first time he ever sees it. It's like the most important thing ever. Just because the fridge wanted to touch his cock idiotic in a video game not even in real life it's like they never played a game before and it drove me nuts so i muted all the audio and what's hilarious is people like ah. also think about it right think about it in reality you come across a fridge that is not only has an ai in it but the ai is horny wouldn't you be curious about how you can engage with this fridge wouldn't you be interested in like hey okay i i I might get the only opportunity that everybody's ever got. I might, I might want to give it a shot. You know, I might be interested. You, you might want to find out how it feels like, what it's, what it's like. You know. I see. Phil's muting the Anya because the think about it. Sexual to him, and he can't take it. No, moron. You, you're just. You could join the moronic nature of the people who made this part of the game, because you don't understand. I'm just trying to learn the game, especially when I'm doing it on a live stream. And this is going to be a playthrough that's public. This isn't okay. fucking around at home for myself and if i fuck it up it's no big deal if i don't learn how this stuff works really how dude. the hell am i supposed to play the rest of the game now the whole narrative is about the that it's distracting you from from getting skills in the video game so i actually muted the audio of the game and in my headphones just so i could sit there it's like we're gonna sit here for like five minutes we're gonna learn the menus and i did he always like even if he has the ability to make a good excuse he makes a shitty excuse 
it's like a talent of his. Because in this case, all he had to do is just say, I don't think, I think this is too distracting from the actual game. I don't think it belongs there, and I think it's a little too far. That's all you got to say. I upgraded my shotgun a bit. I upgraded. That's how I got the spin move on the axe and stuff like wow. that. Wow. And after that, I was like, did they shut up now? So then I unmuted all the audio. Like, yes, they're all quiet. Thank God. Now we can play the game. And for the rest of the stream, it was fine. You know, it was just that one really obnoxious part. But again, it seems like whoever the audio director was for the game is a the audio, audio director. director. He, really <laughs> he should he should get fired. I understand what makes a game. Let's find him. Let's uh, let's dox him right now. Um, Atomic Heart, right? We're going to do that. We're gonna do that Wikipedia docs. Um, then let's find setting synopsis annihilation. I don't know what this is. We got a soundtrack. So we got three composers. We got Mick Gordon who did the the Doom soundtrack. He's a very talented person. But he was not the sound the audio director, right? He just made the soundtrack. He didn't make the fridge corny. So we got um Mundfish. So we gotta find Mundfish. Atomic Heart and About Us. What is this guy? Why is he dressed like a terrorist? Uh, do we have audio? Something? Nope. So, I guess... Can't find him. Career, art, filming, music. Oh, we can't even find the audio director to, to tell him that he should get fired. Anyways, fuck him. Go back to Phil. Fun or, or when to have those moments of humor or whatever you want to do. I mean, honestly, it's kind of disturbing. There's a creature, a robot creature, trying to kill you and it's talking dirty. You're like, ugh. Okay. It makes you feel like, like maybe that's what they were going for, like horror, right? They were yeah. going for a horror moment. You're going for, like, I don't want to die, but also I'm a little bit horny right now. So I might actually give it a shot. That's kind of what I think they were going for, you know? To which I'm actually okay. <laughs> For that to be to, to be it's a horror moment. Oh, scare me for a bit. You know, it's like a it's like imagine you're watching Alien and the xenomorph like comes out of like a uh I don't know like a air vent or something, but then it starts twerking and you think about like you know I'm hiding here and I'm safe right now, but this this alien is twerking like real hard. It 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 got some moves. Maybe I should come out. Maybe it's not gonna kill me. Maybe we, we got a chance. But at the same time, then to have that be droning over a critical moment where I'm learning a gameplay element, right? So I I didn't check. I have no clue, but you would understand. You would think that's probably what all the morons on the internet were talking all about. The yesterday. morons. Oh, Phil couldn't take <laughs> the stupid sexual fridge. And you know it was funny because after that part when I unmuted everything, someone made a comment in the chat and they were yeah, like, "Yeah, because Xenomorph got like two mouths, right?" So imagine the effects. Let me look up a, a photo of a Xenomorph. Just to go through with that visual. Oh yeah, it got a like really big brain. Imagine how <laughs> the the goblin capacity. This is the the apex predator of of the glizzy goblin, dude. Look at this. Look at this. How you how can you not not give it a shot? Why not? Look at this. It got so many weird holes and pipes and stuff going out. God damn. This one specifically. What is, is it? Is is it holding a baby's head? In his hand? Okay, I'm, I'm done. We're going... Um, We're going to have well, issues. So you, you know, you ruined the game because you did this that. And I was basically like, well, here's what you can do. If you if you want to live that moment for yourself, you can get Atomic Heart. You could replay that moment on loop on your own console. And then you can, like, lick her Oh, yeah, one, one last thing. I'm just going to show the mouth. Xenomorph mouth. Right? Yeah, this this is what I'm talking about. It's it's a one size fit all type of scenario. So you know, it doesn't matter how gifted you are, it's gonna get the job done in in peak performance. Anyways, that that's it. We're 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 this shutting it down. Shove her head into the fucking uh the dairy section of the fridge. Whatever you want to do, if that's your your kink or whatever, go for it. I mean, that's fine with you. Go for it. But for me, I'm trying to play a fucking game. And learn it so i don't want to dick around with this nonsense i just want to fucking concentrate yeah he's a serious gamer insane. guy there you go anyway um <laughs> that that was just the, kind of one of the notable things and by the time that we finished the two hours of atomic heart it seems like everyone was of the impression we want more of this because it's such a weird game right so okay good i'll play more of it if that's what you guys want now here's the thing that was the initial two hours and today we're going to play it as the major stream three more hours we're going to today judge if this ends up being something that we actually do a full playthrough of. After today's stream, we got to make that determination. Um, 
I'm not going to spoil this one for you guys. I'm not going to do it. But you all know what happened. This fridge broke him. So he kind of gave up. And can we get the... This is a dense... Of... He wasn't flustered by the fridge, you fucking idiots. Can I find the part where he... Where he finds it? And you see, apparently it's like a... It's kind of like a viral thing for people to react to this. And he somehow had the worst reaction. So let's see the different people's reactions to this. Different streamers, right? Perfy robot. Critters. I'm here to help you upgrade your red hot pocket rockets. And believe what? me, handsome. Oh my you gosh! Can upgrade whatever tickles your fancy. Weapons are useful. Open the corresponding okay. window, Major. Get rid of that glove, handsome. You Install. don't need him anymore now that you've got oh, me. Oh, got different levels. I'll service you however right. you want. Yo, Nora, stop With talking to me, bro. A massive sword. Oh my gosh. Sit deep into my socket so what I can make the freak? it sturdier and sharper. Bro, make sure y'all got Nora earphones on, bro. Great weapon. <laughs> Make sure y'all got earphones. This is actually very good advice. I'll service you however you um. deeper again. Oh yes, honey, more, more. Yes. You notice how none of them has an actual hostile reaction? It is a surprising reaction because it is surprising for something like this to happen to you in a video game, but it's not hostile. It's not. I'm pissed off. I'm gonna. Do we have uh, DSP in this? No, we got quick. Corey X Kenshin. So let's I'll see this guy. Service you however you want. Stop. Got Stop. a sword? A massive sword? Thrust it deep in. Nora can upgrade weapons. And oh! Oh! Wow! Wow! You see, nobody pissed off. They are surprised. They're having grandiose streamer reactions but oh this is uh this is probably a good video this, this is, is this is how yes. you don't be a mature adult in atomic heart edition shout out to mitch the desert squiddos gaming channel for the I, I content um let's find it here i know it's exactly here there it is so this is he walks in the office and he meets sexy women Talk about style science is power i tell you the boss has a way Science of looking center. down on insurmountable obstacles. I really respect that. There are no obstacles science cannot surmount. Other than an electronic glove that never shuts up. Here's your vehicle activation. These are sentry bots with these things. <laughs> a key. Wow. So instant metal fabrication out of thin air. Would I rather be here in Night City? You know, I'm not going to answer that question Sorry, until we get further in the game because you never know what's coming up. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is Night City. Night City was pretty bad, so pretty bad because he got like dicks everywhere they got like dildo shops right. and everything and there was a, a pretty graphic sex scene in the game that he absolutely hated he absolutely hated that sex scene we're gonna have fun down on level one we're going down but wait we didn't get the because here right after he took the keys he started looking around and talking about the airplanes he completely ignored talking about the women and that they are sexualized or attractive we just started talking about like airplanes so, what we're going to do now is, uh, let's watch something else. Mm. Are we going to see the, the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Salt? I guess it's nothing different than what it is every year. It's shit. So, what are you going to do about that besides just die because the fucking controls suck? It is, right? It's like, it's kind of the same shit every year. Imme Dude, he drops immediately is shooting at me. How the fuck did you instantly see me and fire and kill me before I could even see you? It's so insane how laggy it is. What the hell? Are you kidding me? I was in advantageous Oh yeah, the, the new thing this year, I don't think if it's necessarily a new thing, but it's him calling out the ping and... Talking about how this is not 12 milliseconds, you fucking idiots. Great fucking game. Hostile UAV in the area. Grenade! Invisible enemy kill. Yeah, it's not 12. It's it's at game. least 14. What a piece of shit game this is, dude. Yeah, man, this shit sucks. So I guess that's the Call of Duty experience. That's that. That's it.
That's the dark side filled COD experience. Then we got, oh, of course, we got also Wings of Redemption playing it. So let's see how he is different than Phil. Nobody remembers so let's skip to a random point where he's actually playing the game. And what do we got? And this is the, the other There's type of experience you can see. So Dude, fantastic. So Let's see. Does he at least cry about the ping? Or he just cries about being bad at camping? Oh yeah, he is oh, bad at camping. Dude. Dude. And here we got a defeat. I want to see this defeat. Oh man, it's really tough to be Wings of Redemption. <laughs> this somehow has way more dead air than a DSP stream. Because at least with DSP we got excuses. It's almost like Wings just gave up on making excuses. Uh, there's also this great video that I saw yesterday. Shout out to Mishima World Order. A hood one to watch for opposite reaction is the T Rani video. That one is unreal. Uh, I don't, I don't know what what that one is. It's him trying to trying to say that it's not a slur. Is that the thing? Uh, okay. So uh, this next one is called impromptu content. Shout out to uh, Mishima World Order. I'm not gonna play the whole video. Just explain to you basically what the concept is. This is. All the dead air in time wasting during like your regular Q and A session, so it's just it's just a montage of him sitting around and actually providing no content. All right, I um um <clears throat> um basically was told that you're just gonna have problems for the rest of your life. <laughs> this is great. Um, then we got something else. I don't know what we got though. All right, chat. Let's uh, let's kick kick it into full gear. And right now, tell me what I should watch. Please, somebody tell me what I should put on my stream. Ain't nobody gonna tell me how to live. You piece of shit. <sighs> let's see what we got. Then we got, uh, in the last few days, I've seen probably 10 videos of people roasting Boogie. Man, if I really cared about this guy, it would be like peak time to be his troll. But I just don't. Look at this. This is like back-to-back -back videos on people shitting on him. We got Review Tech USA. We got uh, Murakar. We got uh, that Papa Gunt. What was his name? Papa Papa Gut? This is like a fat guy with uh, with a beard. He was shitting on him. And, of course, we got the Lol Cow podcast having a, a bra brand new video. So, there we go. Fantastic shit. Let's check out my sub box, because that always comes through with quality edition of content. Uh, the cabaret section I, I checked out, uh, it was very sexualized. Very much incel ener energy. And then... Uh, yeah, we saw Boogie being on his knees. Hey, have I seen the, the last Ex Mortis Beggar Journey? Or maybe I just saw that it came out. Yeah, this one. Maybe I saw that it came out, and I thought about doing it once on stream, but I never came around to it. So, I guess, let's just go into it. What is up, everybody? We are back for part 17 of A Beggar's Journey. Usually I have something to say at the beginning of these videos, but today I'm going to keep it pretty short and simple and thank you guys for all the support you've shown ever since the first episode of this series. So needless to say, obviously credit to X Mortis. We love his content. Uh, go watch the video, of course, because this is one of the most um, complete and detailed documentary series on the guy. You know, this is a deep cut. This is for the real fans. And something like Turkey Tom stuff is for, you know, your casual lolcow watcher. 
If you want to keep up with this comprehensive documentary, then I suggest you look down to where it says subscribe and give it a click. It's a simple task, won't even take you a second. Well, unless you're visually impaired, then I kind of have to wonder how you even got into this video in the first place. But nonetheless, without wasting any more of your time, let's hop right back into the lore of Dark Side Field. I think where it ended last time, I guess we're going to find out where it begins this time, but I think it was him buying a PS5. 2020, Phil sat on his pre-stream and once again ranted about how other streamers were making more money than him, just from simply playing or reacting to popular video games. And actually, since this is a great video, uh, I'm going to do a hybrid thing where I'm going to check out if it's going to be possible to do this and gaming at the same time, because um it's very fun right super fun so let's let's give it a shot games like fortnite or among us and yet again he showed off that jealousy he had that these type of content creators were the ones who was earning the most revenue while people like him who's had this supposed legacy he likes to boast around is still sitting at the bottom of the food chain begging for the scraps that any one of his dinhead supporters could give him but somewhere in that gin soaked brain of his he had the audacity to say that what he does is more meaningful than what those other streamers are doing. I, I never noticed it until now. Look at this background. So you got the, the Xbox and the PlayStation 5 boxes. Right, you got it. But on top of it, you got like the YouTube play button just leaning on a PlayStation 5 box. And it's like, what the fuck? This shit is trash. It's like the lamest thing. The, yeah. the most, the most, um, uh, the most midlife crisis thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Begging people for tips and banning anyone in your chat who might have the slightest criticism about how you run your streams is supposedly a more meaningful form of content than whatever those other meme streamers are doing. And that's the term DSP came up with for these types of people. A meme streamer. A streamer who apparently plays games made for children. And instead of looking dead inside for six hours straight, and playing a game completely isolated away from society, doing his best to avoid any real form of conversation besides reading whatever the hell goes on in chat, they seem to enjoy what they're doing. Not only are they more positive and respond well to feedback their audience gives, that is true. they also invite friends or collaborate with other streamers to help boost their numbers. But fuck any of that, who cares about doing shit that's gonna help amplify your career? In Phil's eyes, that's not the correct approach when it comes to streaming. No, apparently the way he does it is the best and only way you should be doing things. And anyone who says otherwise, well, they're just a brainwashed moron. That, that That's what he does until like five years pass and he comes to terms with the fact that he's a failure at whatever, you know, the subject of the discussion was. And then he's instantly super open to feedback. Like he's just like, oh, you guys, I realized I'm wrong. And now I want you to tell me how I can fix it. But that's a little bit too late, brother. Stupid kid that doesn't even know what real streaming is supposed to look like. It's totally okay to nearly fall asleep playing Yakuza. Or pausing your stream full stop to shit talk one of your fans for stepping out of line. Hell, I guess it's even okay to jerk one out right before you get into gameplay, right? <laughs> sure the okay, so jerking off before gameplay got the ex mortis seal of approval. It's nice to know that. So now I can feel not guilty for doing it. Feel the raw type shit feeling his fans like to represent. I guess those other guys have their priorities fucked up. How dare they try to actually make their streams worth watching. All right, now ladies and gentlemen, I have something very quickly I want to talk about, all right? It has come to my attention, the kind of content creation that I do. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad I'm watching this video in particular because it takes me back to a time that I had kind of forgotten about. You know, like 2020 DSP with a shitty little background it thing. It's beautiful. very nostalgic in a way. Which I'm very happy that there are people that feel that what I do has meaning. And a lot of people, I guess, would feel that what I do is very different from what a lot of content creators do. For a very good reason. Alright? If you don't notice, when I'm playing games and when I'm doing my playthroughs and coverage... And this, I... is, also, um, this is also the origin of meaningful. This is when it was starting to become a thing. And you see how much it has ex escalated since then? Now it's like crazy. It's almost every other sentence is like meaningful, meaningful, meaningful. Goal 
is number one to obviously put out an entertaining stream for you guys. That's that's priority. If, you, if no one's entertained, then what was the point of doing the stream? <clears throat> but as someone who's definitely been around for a long time, 12 years as a content creator, I strive to cover games and when I'm enjoying a game, to play it at my own pace, all right, to try to explore all the facets of the game that I'm playing, whether it's side content, main, main story, or anywhere in between, and to basically put out an entertaining playthrough for you, all right? When I'm doing a stream or playing a game, I understand that I have two audiences, one that's a live audience that very much wants to interact with me and have a good time and talk about topics that maybe aren't related to the game and that's okay, but also that there's a YouTube audience that watches my videos and they like watching it for the playthrough aspect. Oh, I'm going to see someone play a game from start to finish. I'm going to get to understand the bosses and all the gameplay elements and maybe use this as a judgment for myself whether or not I like a game or not, okay? What I've seen at this point is that most people, I'm going to be honest here, most people on Twitch who are doing this for a living and are very popular, I'm talking the people who have 10 times the audience I do, don't do that, okay? They are in it because they are, how can I say it? I don't want to say, by the way, I'm not talking shit about anyone else. I'm not saying this is the wrong way to go about it. I'm just saying I've noticed a distinct difference oh, between man. them and me. He, right. he's, talking, he's talking both sides of his stroked out mouth in this one. And in general. Because he, like, he wants to be the guy who just talks shit to people. He really wants to be. Because that's truly who he is as a person. But the, at the same time, he's, he's, his mouth is writing checks that his ass can't cash. And it's, it's a problem, and he recognizes this, so he tries to, like, restrain himself, but it doesn't always work. All right, let me, let me explain how I came to this revelation, and then maybe you'll understand it better, okay? So yesterday, I'm off from streaming, <clears throat> and I'm just curious, gee, what do I want to talk about on my pre-stream tomorrow? And I start reading the threads on Twitter. So you want to know what happened yesterday? Fortnite had another season-ending event, like, Fortnite, okay, guys? Fortnite. Okay. A game that, let's be honest here, those of us who are heavily into gaming, we right now are, are so interested in all the giant major gaming releases that have come out in the last few weeks because of the launch of the new consoles. We're having so much fun with games right now. Spider-Man, Assassin's Creed, Demon's Souls, Sackboy, Call of Duty, Yakuza 7, and that's just a few. All right. This dude is legitimately ga gatekeeping gaming, bro. Imagine being this fucking pathetic. You gotta gatekeep gaming. Because this is what, what this whole segment is about. Us, us real gamers, we're excited about real gaming. And those fake gamers and all the fake streamers, they're just doing it for views. Because Fortnite makes money. But let me tell you something. Fortnite is a game that is, is designed to be very addictive. So in that way, it's extremely successful. It is very well supported more than a lot of other games and it has a very naturally existing community which you can't really say about many many other games so fortnite is is way more underrated that you might think fortnite is the last fucking thing where any of us are thinking about right now like fortnite like been there done that that game had its time in the sun and yeah it has it has viral popularity amongst a group so basically the the point of this segment is just Nobody cares about Fortnite, but with extra steps. Because he can't just outright say that because that's factually wrong. He needs to say it in a way that he thinks makes sense, but it still doesn't make sense. Kids who jump in and play on a daily basis for the kitty aspect of it, but these aren't people who are heavily into gaming doing major playthroughs of giant games. You see what I'm saying? It's a very different audience. The way I see it with the Fortnite audience these days, and by the way, again, I'm not talking shit about it. All right. And now so he's about to talk shit about audience, it. It kind of reminds me of almost like esports leagues. If you're not into esports, you probably know nothing about esports. But if you're outside of that bubble, it's like non existent. You don't hear about it. You don't care about it. I almost feel like that's what Fortnite has become. It's a game where a bunch of kids play it all the time. This is still their gaming focus, is Fortnite. But outside of that, mainstream gamers who are into games. What the fuck do we care about Fortnite? We're playing all the great new releases that have come out <clears throat> this past month, and we could give two shits about playing Fortnite right now, right? Okay. But but why why should I give a fuck about what other people are playing? Especially when we're talking about video games, something that is just for your own entertainment. Why do you care so much about what other people are playing? Just focus on your own fucking gaming shit, dude. It's really not that hard. 
But you guys have to understand, and this is me. Kind and of he's he's of doing this entire preamble just to tell him in the end that the fucking streamers are trash. That's his whole point, because that's where it started from. It's like how I am different from an, a different streamer is that I don't play Fortnite because I'm a real gamer. That is basically his point. If you distill it to what he meant to say, without all the, the roundabout weasel words, that's what he's trying to say. Out of my comfort zone, going on social media. Big ups, uh, Logan K. Let's do a manual super chat reading. Um, gatekeeping gaming at 40 years old. That's some serious hello fellow kids energy. And I get it. Sometimes you, you need to be protecting your hobby, but that's not what he's doing. What he's doing is just doing it for his own benefit so he can say that he's better than somebody else doing something. It's not that gaming is suffering because gaming is suffering from the Fortniteification of everything and battle passes, microtransactions, and FOMO ex exploitation. Gaming is suffering from that and Fortnite has done his fair share of damage. But that's not even his fucking point. His fucking point is that he's better than Nick A30 or, or Ninja because they play Fortnite. And he plays the real gamer games. Yesterday, that game is still insano popular with kids. So they're making so much fucking money hand over fist on that game. Still to this day, years later, okay? Um, that every time they do a season ending event, it's like virally popular. I'm not shitting you. There's content creators on Twitch who had their biggest day streams ever Oh All my they God. were doing was watching. And now we're fucking pocket watching people on, on fucking on Twitter or on Twitch or whatever the fuck he said. You're just po pocket watching somebody else's success. Trailer for the new season of, of Fortnite. Okay. They had the hundreds of thousands of viewers. Yeah. They made tens of thousands of dollars watching okay. the trailer for the new season of Fortnite. Okay. And this is bad because? That's wild and insane. And that's something I would not do. And you guys oh, know that. Yeah. You guys know that for me, I don't care about that. I've never been into the virally popular games. I mean, yeah, I'll play Fall Guys and I enjoyed it. But I didn't get heavily into it. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. It's like, you guys, uh, you guys know I never do this. Except when I do it. And then I move the goalpost so it makes it seem like I didn't do it. But I actually did do it. But I didn't do it as much as the other people, which makes me the better person. So... So that means that I deserve their success and they don't deserve the success they have because that's fraudulent and illegitimate. Sounds good? Did. Uh, same thing Pat with Fortnite. I've played it. I've been there, done that. I thought it was an okay game and then I didn't really enjoy it that much and moved on, right? But this is what I mean. Like, it's just crazy. There is an entire culture of people who are playing games, streaming games, and watching game streams that are not in line with the kind of stuff that I do here on my streams. Okay, I well, yeah, that's why you fucking washed up. Nobody cares about your shit. Maybe you should try taking some notes from those people, which is, ironically, what he's doing exactly now. Because yesterday, you guys, if you remember, that was what the pre-stream was about. Because somebody sent him a fucking comment on YouTube telling him that other streamers do something in a different way, and he, was, he spent, like, half an hour talking about how he wants to do it that way as well. So there you go, Phil. Talking from both sides of his mouth. Playthroughs of big games. Yes, I'll also play retro games. But you see what I do? I'm a content creator who grew, grew in popularity on YouTube when it was important to be doing full playthroughs of games. I don't just sit here every day and say, okay, today we're going to play the virally popular game. Oh, we're going to play it for two weeks. Great timing, because that's exactly what he said he wanted to stop doing yesterday. And he said, oh, you know, maybe it's time to change. Maybe I should stop doing the full playthroughs because that's not working anymore. So I guess the, those guys who were shit talking in 2020 were right, right? Or maybe they were right, they're right now, but they were wrong in 2020 when he was shit talking them. And then we're gonna drop it and we're gonna go to the next virally popular game. We're gonna play it for a week. We're gonna drop it. And then we're gonna do this because it's, oh, Fortnite's hot again. So now today we're gonna watch the new trailer. We're gonna play Fortnite for two weeks. And then we're gonna do the next virally popular game. All right, that's never what I've been about. It's never what I'll be doing. Because I feel that the kind okay, of uh, when when it becomes the thing he will be doing because he's desperate for views. You should pull up that clip. Content that I do is more meaningful, and this is why I love, uh, in particular, the the uh, the Beggar's Journey documentary series because it has a lot of like underrated clips like this one, where it just kind of distills his whole personality and his whole worldview on streaming and content creation, and you can see exactly what he's about. Especially if you compare it to what he's doing nowadays.
And I'm gonna be honest with all of you. I love what I do for a living. There you go. I'll never be a big time Twitch streamer. I'll never be one of these guys because that's not what they seem to do. They seem to be, I have to jump on the new meme. I have to jump on the new game. I have to sit here and literally the content they make doesn't seem to have meaning. It's more just have a few jokes and positive shit today with a bunch of kids on my stream and make a uh, insane it's amount of It's not meaningful money. content. Um, but they don't do full game playthroughs, right? You're not going to see them sitting down and playing fucking cyberpunk um, and playing it start to finish or anything like that. That's not what they do, okay? If you're a gamer like me, who you're not just jumping on a stream to play a game while it's virally and, popular... The, the problem is, right... Because any of those streamers can make the same argument DSP does. You know what? I play the viral games because that's what my audience enjoys. And they think it's meaningful. And that would be an absolutely valid argument, right? But now he's making that same argument in his favor, making everybody else look like their content is meaningless. That's because that's exactly what he said. He thought th their content has no meaning. Because they're playing the viral games. Apparently you drop it. Or you know what I mean? You're a me I almost want to call him a meme streamer. Your point when you come on a stream is not to do a playthrough, not to do meaningful gameplay content. But all you're looking to do is make a bunch of memeing jokes with kids all day, okay? And by the way, again, I'm not criticizing that kind of content creation and saying it's bad. I'm just- He just called it meaningless and he called the meme streamers that make content for kids. And then he tried to immediately take all that back. What do you guys think about that? Do you think it worked out? Saying, holy shit. Is that so different from what I do? Okay, seriously. It's seriously. so different. Meme streaming for the kiddies is so ridiculously different. And now he's insulting them again. Because of course you can just say DSP makes content for disabled people and gets their paychecks because they're easy to manipulate. And you would be completely right because it's been factually proven. So there you go, DSP. That's a counter argument. And... <clears throat> meaningfully covers games. There's because no at least way. that's the thing. If you're if you're doing content for children, more often than not, they don't have the ability to to give you the money, right? They need to ask their parents. This is what is happening, for example, with like Logan Paul when he advertises to children. Those kids need to ask their parents to buy the merch. So in a way, the, the marketing is actually aimed towards the parents themselves. But DSP, his whole marketing is aimed towards vulnerable and uh, most of, more often than not, unstable people where he can take advantage of the fact that they are the way they are and he can make them sympathize with him and therefore giving him money. Because 99% of all his issues come down to money. You could say there's nothing going on in gaming right now. The only way is if you are one of these meme streamers who all you care about is making jokes with kids. Well, I'm not going to maintain a viewing audience for Assassin's Creed Valhalla with a bunch of attention... Uh, uh, how can I say? Uh, How can you say it without? Span. Yeah. I'm gonna sit there and watch you play cyberpunk. Oh, uh, he was like, "How? How can I say it without making it seem like I'm insulting them, but also insult them at the same time?" That that was a really good DSP moment. There and watch you play Assassin's Creed. They're not gonna sit there and watch you play Yakuza. Because then, because then you can say, "Hey, Phil, you just uh, you just called my audience ADHD kids," and he's like, "I I didn't say that. That's not what I said. I said there's they're younger." and attention lowered people okay i didn't i didn't say it's adhd kids you have to be someone who only plays these virally popular meme games among us fortnite minecraft you have to jump on every memeing bandwagon to retain your audience the memeing bandwagon can you imagine that can you imagine if that's what i did every day i can't i would hate my life i seriously would i would hate coming to stream every day Every day, I just basically got to sit here and do stupid meme jokes with you guys as I play games that are completely frivolous and have no real meaning. Meaningless games. Gameplay experiences to sit down and fuck around with Fortnite every day. <laughs> and forget about your... Meaningful gameplay experiences? Bro. How is it meaningful gameplay experience to pause the game and start talking about the money that you didn't get? This is a meaningful gameplay experience? Come on, dude. Get the fuck out of here. This smells like cope to me. To edit content for your YouTube channel. It's a fat code. All of that is just a waste of time. Because in feel eyes, streaming is way harder than making edited videos anyway. Westside Rascal Cheer and he said he feel preemptive reactionary commentary is a hard part. It, it is. Maintaining commentary on a game for an extended period of time live without editing and actually entertaining an audience, interacting with them, keeping them happy 
is way more challenging than what I used to do on YouTube. It That's not is. true. What I used to do on YouTube was just make up shit. And that's you know, not true. Hat. Because it's it's like apples and oranges. Because maybe you're like a really good editor and you can make a, a video that's normally not very interesting much more interesting to sit through. Or you're the opposite. You're a bad editor, but you're good at streaming. So it's it's a different skill set in both situations. And him, the, the guy who lacks the skills for both, comparing them, it's, it's not very... It's not a reliable opinion, to say it the least. It's not a very meaningful or, uh, you know, a, a, an opinion you can take seriously. Ass and stuff. Now it's way harder to actually see pertinent things. Then the question that immediately comes to mind upon hearing something so outrageous like this is if streaming is such a mentally straining form of content creation, then why wouldn't he do something that's more laid back and chill like editing videos is allegedly supposed to be? Because well, profit. The simple answer is because Phil is full of shit. Obviously, and that I mean that sense. is the real answer, but also money, because ad revenue doesn't pay him shit anymore. The most money, and if he was to give that up and stick to strictly uploading videos, then we all know he loses a good majority of his revenue. But what do I know? I'm not a hardworking streamer like Phil is. I guess I'm just someone who's taking the easier way out in terms of generating content. I don't know. But moving on. Phil continued on his envious crusade by discussing content creators who were receiving early gifts and getting review copies of Cyberpunk 2077 from CD Projekt Red. Phil of course was left out of this social event because Phil doesn't know the definition of being social. And instead of ignoring this, or congratulating the people who received those early review copies and could have possibly talked about the features that were being shown off in game, he would rather instead bash those creators by calling them paid shields and disavow the idea of review copies as a whole. The first thing. I have to talk about is that this morning all of a sudden in synchronicity a Syn ton of people synchronicity you mean like syn synchronicity synchronicity maybe I'm just wrong hold on synchronicity is that how you're supposed to synchronicity yes concept first introduced by an analytical psychologist Carl G Young to describe Circumstances that appear meaningfully related, yet lack a causal connection. Okay. Uh, Synchricity. Okay, hold on. But that's just a company. Yeah, well, I get he's just wrong. You he know. just wanted to say something meaningful and just end up being wrong instead, which is the story of his life. Well, the golden selected streamers and content creators of the internet. The, the selected ones. ones. Good graces. Oh yeah, my, my quick two cents on the whole shilling thing is... Um, just take it with a grain of salt, okay? Because people are obliged. Obliged? Uh, it's their obligation to put whether or not they got the key for free in the description or title or whatever. So you see you, they got it for free. Keep, keep it in mind, okay? Doesn't mean their opinions are worthless, but take them with a grain of salt. That, that's about it. It's a really simple problem. But not for him, I guess, because they're like killing his business or something. Etc. All received special care packages from CD Projekt Red for Cyberpunk 2077, including an action figure of John Silverhand, a very special branded stream deck. That John has Silverhand. Black color scheme of the game, uh, a bunch of PR materials, you know, so so collector's edition shit, you know. Now, surely, absolutely surely. Getting that special care package one week before the release of the game would not influence those content creators in any way, shape, or form when it comes to their opinions of the game. I mean, why would that happen? Why would some, so sending someone a special bag of swag, right? A bag of swag. Anything about their thoughts about a game. I mean, I couldn't imagine. Okay. You know? But, I but you know that, right? You know their influence. So just... Keep in mind that they're influenced, and that's it. It's super easy, and it's super simple. And in the end, everybody wins. I mean, why would sending a game console to someone months in advance, completely for free? Because I, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of unreliable reviewers, so I just don't watch them. And then, there you go. You just watch a couple of reviews. Because it's all like video games at the end of the day. They're not like promoting anything else. Influence their thoughts about said game console, even though they're under an NDA, and they can't even criticize it. I mean, why would flying someone out to Europe to a castle 
for an exclusive hands-on preview of The Witcher 3 influence their thoughts about the game. I mean, why would that happen, right? <laughs> right? <clears throat> Literally, every person this morning who posted up a post and said, Oh, look at this swag bag that I got from CD the swag Project. bag. It's advertising the game. And you ate the advertisement. You slurped it right up. All oh, delicious. That's all it is. It's paid advertisement. Now, do those people actually receive money? No. No. They received product. Product is still payment. And they put out the advertisement in conjunction with receiving the product. So... If you watch that kind of content creator, all right, if you support that kind of content creation, you are supporting paid advertisement. Yes. Every advertisement is fucking paid. I mean, not not every. You can give somebody a shout out for free, but advertisements usually are paid. And you know that advertisements usually are not fair and objective because you've literally got paid to do the thing. So why is this such a problem? Why? Why? Because he's acting like once somebody advertises something to you, you, you're you instantly inclined to buy it. You instantly want to consume it. Because I guess that's how he works, because that's how his brain works. Because, of course, his DSP, the most susceptible, gullible fucking idiot on the planet. So I'm not really even surprised. Porting someone who likely gets most of the stuff that they need for their business completely for free. You're supporting someone who likely... Half the time when they're talking is actually talking under an NDA and probably is kissing a game's butt simply because they benefit for doing so. Okay? So, again, that's fine. If you like that, support it. But be cognizant of what you're supporting. All right. People who likely, likely are getting everything they need for their business for free. They probably are contracted to make big money behind the scenes anyway. So, think about who you support. You know, sure. people who need the actual crowdfunding to keep afloat. Oh, getting everything for free. Oh, that's what it's about. Well, it's nice to actually get on topic and talk about what we're actually talking about. So this, the the whole point of this thing was just to tell, hey, those people, somebody is paying them already. You don't have to pay them, but me, nobody is paying me. So how about you do it? Sound good? I think it sounds good. Sounds good to me. It sounds like meaningful content. Yeah, shout out, um, shout out COVID 1984, dude. Uh, coming from the guy who always buys into the hype for any new AAA game, but everyone else is shill, he's not. Uh, and also the guy who always cares about what the critics are going to say unless they disagree with him, in which case the critics are a bunch of fucking idiots. You should never listen to them. Or paid That's outstanding consistency. Right. Just throwing that out there. You do with it what you will. I'm just saying, you guys. Tractors trying to spin it in a negative oh, way. Oh yeah. He's a little salty because he didn't get a swag bag. Uh, I don't want an action figure. No, what Cyberpunk. he's what I believe he's actually salty about is the fact that those people not only get paid through sponsorships, but also people give them donations. That's what he's actually salty about. Because he thinks once you get that corpo money. Nobody should give you money. Why would the fuck would they support you? You already got a paycheck coming in. But he, he got like four different revenue sources, which are all based on exploiting you. You know, the streaming source where he just sits around and just begs his ass off asking for money explicitly. You got Patreon, which is still basic, basically passive income because he doesn't really have to do anything for it unless you, you give him more than 50 bucks. In which case, if you want, he's going to make a private video. Uh, what else has he got? Um, YouTube ads, which is YouTube, the corporation paying him for people watching his videos, which is not something that you agreed to support. The ad just plays. It's not anything you had a say in. So how many more streams of revenue does he need to be satisfied and stop being salty about other people that are getting paid by corporations? I wonder. I don't need a stream deck because I have one over there, brand new inbox that I can't use because I don't have the operating system that supports it. I don't That's need not anything true. in the swag bag. I don't care about the swag bag. So he got he got Windows 8.1, right? He can run a stream deck, which is I I I can I can't believe that for a second. Likely would have been a piece of junk, much like all the loot crates and shit that I got over the years when I had that sponsorship years and years ago. Um, it would have sat around and got thrown out. So I don't need the swag bag. I'm just saying those who got it and are advertising it today, there's an agenda behind it. 
Don't be gullible. <clears throat> okay? Also, this guy telling me to not be gullible, being one of the most gullible people on the planet, and preying on gullible people is uh, an instant classic of a moment. Instant classic. He had to once again stroke his inflated ego by stating he could have gotten an early review copy of the game just like everyone else. There are two groups of people who are playing the game today. The first group is people who received early review copies who are only able to do text-based reviews up to now. They were not able to show video footage of the game at all until today. And the embargo lifted today, so those who already had review copies now can finally go out there and stream the game and play the game. Today is the day they're allowed to do that. All right. So you're probably seeing many popular streamers who got early review copies now playing the game because they have permission to do so. All right. The other group of people are people who just happened to get the game early through various methods. Some people who had ordered this game through retail actually got the game last week. I saw people posting up pictures on social media. Look, I got it super early. I can't play it yet because of the embargo. If I put up videos, you know, uh, CD Projekt Red will give me copyright strikes, but when the embargo lifts, I'll play it. And that's what it is. People have been sitting on this game for like a week waiting to play it on the internet if they happen to get an early copy. I'm not doing any of that. <laughs> I'm doing just like what normal people like you are going to do. I'm going to buy the game when it releases on the PlayStation Network store, and I'm going to play it tomorrow, the day that it's supposed to be publicly available for all of you. All right? And some people already, this morning on the stream chat, well, Phil, why didn't you why didn't you get the early copy? And this and I already explained a million times. I'll explain it one more time in a very short form. I don't believe in early review copies. I feel that this... Like they don't exist? Is incredible. This shit is not like Santa Claus. You believe in it or not. And I'm not the biggest fan of it too, but... Incredible. In the end of the day, why the fuck do you care? Unless you're one of those people that, that, you know, that are fighting for the access. This is a very insignificant issue, I would say. Uh, shout out COVID-1984, dude. He's such a hypocrite. If he could get free games from these million-dollar corporations, he would in a heartbeat. And he used to. There's even times he got, like, what, Mario and Sonic Olympics? And he didn't even tell anybody. Until he hated the game and he said, oh, well, good thing I didn't have to buy the game. They gave it to me for free. What a fucking outdated. scumbag. It was needed in the 1990s when people needed to put out print form media to review games early. But now we have the internet. We don't need early review copies anymore. The whole process of some elitist group of influencers and or mainstream games journalists getting early review copies and putting them out is incredibly outdated. And in some cases can even be harmful. And in the case of Cyberpunk 2077, this might actually be the case. And it blows my mind. It does. It absolutely blows my mind that people still care about this. People, um, I don't, people still I don't think they do, it. though. Oh, no, Phil. <clears throat> it needs to exist because of this, this. No, it doesn't. Here's, here's the truth of the matter. If people had, had self-responsibility and people had an... A, 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 an iota of self bro that's like the weirdest what you're on the fence about a game let's say for cyberpunk you're not a he brings up responsibility like self-responsibility and self-control to school other people you know this is the guy who doesn't even want to take responsibility for the video games he's going to play on his stream this is the guy who has absolutely no self-control uh, I'm kidding. He actually has a lot because he overcame two addictions that he is still casually indulging in. Okay? So that means he got a lot of self-control, actually. 100% sold on this game yet. You don't know if you want to get it yet. All right? Instead of reviewing on an early uh, reviewing, instead of relying on early reviews to judge whether or not you want to play this game and then rushing on release day and buying it based on the early reviews, how about you wait a day? And you wait for actual people to play the game and then tell you what they think, right? Like, right now, no one knows how this game is going to play on PS5, except for those who got the early copies through luck, okay? So, those who are lucky enough that they got, like, Best Buy sent it to them early, they're playing the PS5 version right now. So, maybe today, you'll actually get some legitimate information or whatever. You see what I'm saying? But... <clears throat> I'm, you know, why did Phil not get an early review copy? I don't know. Because he's care. Phil. Oh, yeah, it's because he doesn't care. It's because nobody wants to give it to him. That's why. Who yeah. fucking want to give access to Darkseid Phil? A guy who has zero influence and minus reputation.
His reputation is actually a negative amount. Why you want to give that guy a, a code? Ask for early review copies. The fuck? All right. I have a 12 year legacy of content. Oh right? yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. A 12 year legacy. I forgot. How can I forget that? A dedicated That's why he should get it. That believes my opinions on, on games are valid. They find my input very, very important and interesting. Why else would they be watching my gameplay content to begin with? Right? And I know that if I felt like getting it, I could go through the hoops of talking to the PR departments of these games. Oh, the yeah. And registering my screen. You have to register. Yeah, this is the... If I wanted to, I could do it. Which is a, a narcissist a, a check. It's a checkbox. You gotta check. If I could, I could do it. I just don't want to do it. That's, that's the actual truth. I just don't feel like I want to be popular. I want to be miserable instead and convince myself that I'm actually happy. That's, that's how life works. As a content creator and all of that and show, here you see, here's my views and here's this and that. And I could jump through the hoops and be schmoozy schmoozy with these guys and get early review copies. All right. You want to know how I know I could do it? Because I know people way, way, way smaller than me who can do it. They get review copies easily. Yeah, These but are what what is their reputation? Are they good for business or are they like DSP for business? Because that, that's a big difference. Because yeah, there's some streamers that got like, I don't know, averaging 50, 70 views that stand a much bigger chance of, of getting something than him who got, what, averaging, let's say, 300 to 500 views. But, you know, his name been dragged through the mud for like 20 years happy to provide on, dude. copies to someone who's going to give exposure to a game but there's two problems with that the first is i'm not going to kiss a game's ass all right i've never done that i'm not gonna i'm always honest and these companies are very skeptical of someone getting an early copy no. and then slamming a game no, no not really uh his his opinion on games is influenced by more things than your average streamer's opinion on games for him, it has to do with his ego because he can't be seen as being terrible at the game or somebody's going to make fun of him. So it has to be a game that he's kind of at least half, half decent with or you can say just be able to play it without people instantly making fun of him. It also has to do, of course, with the amount of money he makes on stream because otherwise he's not going to like the game even though he says, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm loving the game, I'm having fun. That's just a, a really pathetic way of trying to manipulate people. To make them, to gaslight him into making it seem like the situation is actually different than what it is. It's just a, a gaslighting strategy. But it also influences his opinion on games. Yeah, because it does to me. And that's because he said the same exact shit going over the whole PS5 situation that happened last month in November. Uh, welcome to Snap City, Cheers. If Sony offered you a PS5 early, you would decline it. That would be tough to do. Um, it's very simple. If Sony offered me an early PS5, I would say to them, I will only accept this if you allow me to be honest about the console. If I have a criticism, I want to give it. And if they say, no, there's a review embargo, you can't give a criticism when you get it, I would decline. I would say, I don't want it. That's the God's honest truth. Hell yeah. Honest, honest, Phil. I can't just be a PR machine. I can't be a fucking paid advertisement. I'm just not me. That's never been me. And that's why I didn't seek the, the early consoles. Guys, I want you to understand something, all right? I have daily viewership. If you actually look at unique viewers on Twitch, over a thousand unique viewers watch me on Twitch every day. Oh, wow. Wait, wait, wait. We're, we're still on Twitch back in the day. That's awesome. Hundreds of millions of views and a 12-year legacy on YouTube. And a legacy. Is there a lot of negativity associated with me? Yes, but at the yes. same time, I give exposure to games. All the time really? behind the scenes, I get people contacting me about, will you, will you advertise my game? Will you show off my game? Now, admittedly, it's mostly indie games because those are the guys that are most desperate for exposure. But if I actually worked with a PR firm, because there's these different PR companies for various things. There's a Sony, there's a Microsoft one, there's other ones for like Bethesda and stuff. If I worked directly with those people, chances are I would get advanced release copies of games. I so would we got another one. Consoles. I could there if I wanted to. I just don't want to. Twitch that have one tenth the amount of viewers and following that I have, and they got early consoles and they okay. get review copies of games. But do those people? have people following them that are going to be up in arms about it? I don't think so. It's actually not that hard these days, as long as you can show that you have consistency in your work ethic and you have a dedicated audience that will actually be influenced by things you say and do, you can get things for free. All right? Now, I don't like repeating myself, but Phil, 
Nobody is gonna fuck with you with your kind of track record on the internet. You're not. Hey, big ups, uh, Era, who says uh, him being honest just means being a jerk about it. It's. Uh, I guess he associates honesty with kind of like the Adam Krigler way, right? Because you're an honest asshole. You tell people what you think, even though it it might be hurtful sometimes. He tells them the hateful truth. You might even say that, but in reality, it's it's not really. Uh, a lot of the times it's not even honest because he's telling you things that he might be thinking, but he's saying it in such a roundabout way that it becomes deceptive instead of honest. Like, like, like the whole shebang about streamers and meme games that we saw like a couple of minutes ago, which was basically just a way of telling people that they don't deserve their money because they get paid already. And the smaller guys like Phil deserve your money. Uh -huh. Very nice. Kind of the gaming industry. It's all make believe. You're just a poser. I'm sure you would have had more merit behind the stance you're taking if it wasn't for the fact that you have received early review copies of games before in the past. One of those games being Elo Hell. And the only reason he ever got that game early is because the developers didn't do their research into who DSP was. And they even admitted themselves that they made a mistake in sponsoring his streams. The simple truth is no big gaming company would ever want to use field streams as a way to promote their games or consoles. Because if they take one quick Google search, they're going to find that his history doesn't paint a very flattering image compared to those meme streamers he likes to drag on about. Regardless of that, another thing he brought back was that the Game Awards was approaching and he feared that The Last of Us 2 was going to win due to gaming journalists having very biased opinions. Man, this game is great, but I'm absolutely terrible at it. All right. It's just been revealed. And I know exactly yeah. what I well, I know I exactly what I have to do in this game. I'm just really terrible at, at the execution element. Who is not the shoe in favorite for the viewer's pick. It's Ghost of Tsushima by over 2% of the vote. So what happens? Oh, all of a sudden, magically, a, a second trailer for the game is released for the other protagonist, and every single person who worked on the game including games journalists, as well as voice actors, as well as the game, head of the game themselves, all tweet at once saying the game is so great. Hmm. I wonder how that happened. Just, it must have just been an extreme coincidence. <laughs> right? <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> that being said, guys, if you hey, want shout to the Game Awards, you can. And this morning, they did narrow down to categories. Um... I guess what they did is for the viewer's choice, they had, like, more categories at first. <clears throat> but today, they narrowed it down to just the top five for the people who had already voted. So you can go vote. Um, however, just to forewarn everyone, Bug Snacks was not nominated in a single Bug category. Snacks? And therefore, because Bug Snacks was not nominated, it's obvious that these are all rigged polls. Yes. And it's just not valid anyway. So what, take it with a grain of salt. Was, you know? was Bug Snack some sort of like a modern masterpiece or something? He's got like the weirdest hard on for Bug Snacks. It's so strange. Bug Snacks. Dude, Bug Snacks got snubbed. Therefore, the awards are just fake. They're bullshitting. Bug Snacks. I mean, come on, Dave. Oh, the Bug Snacks. I haven't, I haven't played it, but he, like, it's one of his favorite games of all times. The year 2020. Um,. No one's going to deny that or even argue that fact. There's no way you could. So, that being said, you know, you're basically voting for second place no matter what you're voting on. Okay? <clears throat> Book Slacks absolutely swept every category. So, okay. So or, oh, uh, hold on. Hold on, dude. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an actual gimmick. It's a comedy thing. He doesn't actually mean it for real. Oh, he got me this time. He was so funny that it loop looped back around and it became not funny. And that's why I thought he was for real. Thanks for the morning. I'm sure now, as usual, people will spin them to say that I, I hate, uh, you know. Bill I, hates I hate snacks, you guys. And I hate manly women and all that. Go ahead. Do whatever you want, you fucking morons. Well, he married okay. a manly woman, so. Now, even though Obviously, he, he loves them. care about the Game Awards, he sure seems to care a lot about the fact that The Last of Us was on the fast track of winning it. And for someone who seemingly didn't care, it didn't stop him from going on Twitter to beg his fans or whoever it might concern to actively vote against The Last of Us 2. Now apparently- Oh, did he actually do that? Do we have the tweet in the video? Where he went on Twitter to tell people to not vote for The Last of Us 2? <laughs> asking people to vote for his game and win the ticket to Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fucking gin tweet again. God damn it.
Senator Chia says, now that Druckmann has apologized and removed his joke tweet, will you remove your joke tweet? Ask people to vote for Ghost of Tsushima and apologize like him. You said people are stupid and might not get jokes online. No. Because my tweet was not a joke. I said in my tweet, I felt Ghost of Tsushima was the best game in that lineup. It was serious. It was, serious. Way, it was super for. serial, you guys. That's what I said in my tweet. That's not mobilizing my viewership to vote and stick it to the haters, which is what fucking Druckmann did. He didn't even say vote because the game was good. Bro, who fucking cares haters. about his stupid ass game he was awards? He's being an irresponsible asshole. Let's let's be fucking honest. Most people watch the game awards or whatever Jeff Keighley makes solely for the new reveals because, of course, he's like an industry guy. He can make the substitute of E3. Let's be honest. Who fucking cares about the actual authority behind? The, the awards and what they're supposed to mean. Come on, we just watch it to see what's coming out and get excited. And for every once in a while, somebody run on stage and, and try and prank them. And then you look at Jeff Keighley and he's like super confused and pissed off. That's, that's all I care about. All right, that's not what my tweet said. So I don't need to delete my tweet. No one called me out for my tweet because there's nothing hypocritical about it. However, you are a dummy. And I find it funny how Phil wants to call him out on this behavior. Yet he does the exact same shit. He tells his viewers to donate to his streams to help fight back and stick it to his detractors. So it's really the pot calling the kettle black in this type of situation. But despite all of Phil's efforts, his rally against Neil Druckmann and the Game Awards eventually failed as the last of us 2 won Game of the Year for 2020. And now the Game of the Year award goes to... Oh, he's going to get super pissed off about this. The Last one. of Us Part 2. <laughs> Uh, uh, this is not, um, uh, this is not the new Ex Mortis, this is the, the last one, because it's like from a month ago. Joke. Now if you want my opinion, I definitely believe that Ghost of Tsushima was the better game that year. The yeah, me too. The was far more superb than The Last of Us 2. We've seen the alienate and divide what was a united fan base with its storytelling. And I'm sure a lot of us agree that the Game Awards are not a good representation of what we truly believe are the best games of the year. And instead of throwing a hissy fit about the way the Game Awards is operated, Phil could simply choose to do what we all do when we hear something about the Game Awards. We'll just ignore it. We don't need these corporate guys to tell us what the best game of the year is. We pretty much decide that for ourselves. Yeah. For some reason, Phil just felt as if he needed to fight this aimless battle. In my assumption, to hang on to this moniker of being a real gamer, a man of the people. But the only problem with that is, nobody really gave a fuck about the Game Awards in the first place. So in conclusion, it just made him look like a moron for trying to fight against something he really didn't have any power to change. Are we going to get to see a, a salty segment? Oh, this is great. This is great. So this is which Twitch streamers have the most generous fans. And guess who you got at number one? Dark Side Phil. And uh, what are we averaging like, what, $35 per viewer? Wow. USA released an article showcasing the highest paid Twitch streamers on the website. And on that list, it exposed that DSP had the most generous fans. And once this information got back to DSP in December, he of course did what we all expect Phil to do, and denied the fact that he was making so much money off of bits. 50 Bit Quan here talking about some article online, CashNet USA, never even heard of it, uh, basically outlining all kinds of information uh, regarding Twitch streamers. And apparently they made an article in late September that no one saw until today. Somehow today people are talking about it. Claiming that I have the most generous and supportive viewers. Because if you take the amount of bits that I get. And divide it by the amounts of subscribers that I have on my channel. Overall on Twitch I get the most bits per sub. Okay. Now oh. I looked at the article myself and it's very confusing. <laughs> the number of subs that they list are wrong. Com completely wrong. But maybe um, there was a... At the time, they made the article, right? It was like months ago when they made it. And he's like, no, this is not the actual real-time data. Therefore, you, you guys are liars. He could have just played it off and just say, you know what? I know I'm a small guy, but you guys making me number one is incredibly important to me. And I appreciate it a lot. And just be positive about it. But now we got to obfuscate and pretend like we don't know what they're talking about. But then it's incorrect. So, you know, it's actually not right. And you should, matter of fact, you should give me more money. Because, I mean, this year alone, it says that I had 600 subs, and I know this year I barely ever dipped to only 600 subs. If, if I even did, uh, I've been above 600 subs for quite some time. Oh, so, so, 
So he actually made way more money than what they claimed he did. So that means he would still be number one, but with a larger margin, which is not something that I guess he wants to bring up in this case because he's supposed to not look like he's getting too much money. It's very weird. Um, I don't know where the bit data is coming from because they're. I, I actually took a look at what they said, and I can't. That doesn't really jive with what I'm seeing as results of my channel. Um, I guess what they're saying is they went for. Uh, who knows where they pulled this data from? Who doesn't knows? seem to be accurate. All it's right? not accurate. Now, even if the data was accurate, that's cool because you know what that means. That's something pretty positive. That means. Hey, there we go. I am not a giant streamer on Twitch. Yep. My viewers are supportive of me. They like what I do. They like the style of content I put out that is different from a lot of other streamers, and they support it. It's a very positive article in that regard. I just wish the data made sense, because I looked at it myself. A lot of people tweeted me this <clears throat> during the break, and I started looking it up. I was like, none of this is, looks correct to me. Like, either this data is like, maybe they're looking at data from two years ago or something, you know? Uh, but it doesn't seem accurate at all, all right? But what I can tell you is you guys have been incredibly, incredibly supportive this year. I know that. I'm happy for that. I'm grateful for that. Thank you, guys. All right. Okay. Wow. We got a Steven positive Seagal segment went. after saying it does make sense and, and so and so. Uh, but also, uh, there is a kind of a, a red flag here because there are people that get um, uh, astounding amounts of views, like actually thousands of people watching them, and they, they're nowhere close to this guy making this much money. It, it's almost, it smells fishy. It just kind of does. Even if you knew nothing about the guy, it, it's very strange what is happening. It's Galsiv. Cheerian says, don't fight the data, just accept it. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm don't. i not going to fight the data. I don't understand the data. It doesn't seem to be accurate at all. Just, just a cursory glance at it. Looking at the data, I'm like, when did I have only 600 subs in 2020? I couldn't tell you when I had only 600 subs. So, whatever. If the data is good, I mean, the data actually says something positive, so I'm certainly not going to be upset about it. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go, guys. Let's get my headphones on here. That was a very Some chunky snort as well. It wasn't counting gifted well. subs at all? Really? Really? If it wasn't counting gifted subs at all, could that even still be accurate? Maybe? Do you, I guess that would... If that's the case, that would assume that I have between maybe 150 to 250 gifted subs a month, which could definitely be true. That could be true. Okay. The other thing is, though, even the cheering data doesn't seem to be accurate. Because if you do the math, if they're saying... Uh, I think what they said was three, over 3,000 or on average 3,500 bits per sub. And if you do the math, it still didn't make sense. Like, I actually checked against my data for this year, and it still didn't seem to make sense. It didn't seem to jive with any month in 2020. I just think what it is, here's what I think. I think that site somehow exported data from somewhere, some data dump from some service or site, and did not actually vet the data at all. They just said, we're just going to trust that this data dump is correct. Kind of like how people used to actually judge DSP Gaming's performance on YouTube off of the data off of... Um, Social Blade. What was that website? That Social used Blade. To use? You could use it for everything. You could find out what partnership network you were yeah. with. You could find but out that's not... You the, people have people been knowing this is not reliable for a long, long time. Income. And it's not even a good estimate. That Social Blade, that's what it was called. Yeah. That site, I'm being very honest with all of you, was never correct. Not There wasn't a single day that the data on Social Blade actually jived with my YouTube channel because I used to actually trust it and judge off of it. And then I would look at my channel data and be like, that's not actually what the channel says. It was never correct. What it is, it's, it's pulling data from some source that's an estimate and it could be way off. And I get the feeling that's what this article is, but I don't really care. Again, the data is something positive, so it doesn't really matter if it's accurate or not, okay? Um, you gotta love the route he takes when it comes to this sort of thing. When he's told how much money his fans give him, the sheer amount of money they throw away just because they believe in his bullshit, his first instinct is to tell him it's wrong. Those numbers are fake news. They don't really give him that much money. He can barely afford to buy Actually, the Actually, the thing is that they give him way more. That was his argument in this case, is that, well, it's actually, they're trying to make it seem like I get less money than what I get. I actually make a lot more. That's why it doesn't make sense. Week ...and pay for all the bills inside his gated community. I guess this is what being a real streamer is all about. But this helps analyze one interesting detail in Phil's characteristics. DSP wants you to believe he's broken struggling until his ego gets involved. Whenever DSP is told that he's being upstaged by someone else in terms of money making, this oh, yeah. making revenue isn't such an issue for him anymore. He's making a decent amount of money. They hated one to be Yeah, same when, when people called him out on uh on LTG and, and he was like, Yeah, I I I'm gonna be real with you. I make way more money than LTG. 
Or at least something along those lines. I'm 100% sure he flexed on him. 520 bitches. Other small streamers I watch don't it's make like, Dude, I, I, thought, I thought you couldn't even afford video games anymore. Can you make more money than LTG? You need to get more steady tips. You know, no. I'm not talking about money at all. Uh, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I'm not talking constantly about tips once or twice. Not constantly. Screen, maybe I'll talk about it. If I do talk about it, it's usually because people are asking me. So stop that right now. People are asking him what? If he got enough money? So he just starts bringing it up? That's a really weird thing to say. Ridiculous. I hate to tell you, but smaller streamers are not getting more content. People are asking me about how much I made, so I have to bring it up on stream. Smaller streamers are, you know, they lucky to get contributions. It's very hard to get any kind of a following, any consistent contributions on Twitch at all. All right, so you're just so full of shit. Okay, so, oh, there we go. We, we're gonna use his own logic against them. If you're a smaller streamer, you're having a really hard time getting contributions and a following, but also smaller streamers than him, much smaller, they get free games. Shouldn't they get the free games? So, you know, they, they can save up money because it's really hard to support yourself if you're a small streamer. I don't know. Or that just makes you a shill. Topic of feeling and money issues. Maybe it's uh, it's all of it. Back to feeling his persistent trouble. Maybe it's whatever he feels like at the moment, which is the 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 always consistent DSP opinion is whatever he feels like is good to say at the moment. So sometimes he's gonna defend it, he's gonna be for it, against it. We're gonna be flipping and flopping left and right. It doesn't matter. Whatever is good at the moment. And on December fifth, twenty twenty. Phil dived into a massive rant against the detractors for manipulating their fan base into committing all these awful acts upon him unjustified. But anyway, streaming wise, all right, it was a great day. We had fun on both streams. It was a good time. But behind the scenes, not so much. Because yesterday I received so many chargebacks behind the scenes, it negated what I made on the streams. And, Vintage. You know, I'm not exaggerating. Classic. Here. It literally negated the negation saga that i got on my streams yesterday that this is a, a thing still going on by the way that that happened a couple of days ago that's how many charges if you've been out the loop he got chargebacks again and he started the stream with minus 50 dollars backs came in now the thing is the good news is this is actually not as bad as it's been it actually was way worse at one point <clears throat> wow but i've been able to kind of juice at least put on a frontline defense here when these fake tips are coming in, I usually can identify them and either screen. You guys know I screen them now. If I see a tip that's oh yeah, name, remember that shit. Around and say is this regular here? Who is this the person? tip audit? And if they're not, is, is this guy people, regular? I need to. I need. I need his private info. Is this guy real? Is he regular? I'm gonna take his money. Okay, thanks for the contribution. You fucking idiot. <laughs> Firm that it's a tip from them. I refund it immediately. Um, I usually am able to you know stop that problem from happening on the back end the problem is it's not always that easy there's people who come in here and you know it's a name that i don't recognize and a lot of these contributions are small that are now being charged back and those are e more easy to slip through the cracks okay now it just sucks because i've been getting like one a day a couple of by days. the way quick pause i just want to flex i did this mission and escaped with 0.8 seconds left and it only took me the last 45 minutes of trying it over and over again. You see, I'm actually a god of video games. I might become a full-time gaming streamer. Uh, shout out to COVID-1984. Uh, makes 10 times more than the average American, but he never has money for games, food bills, house repairs. Because uh, you're not supposed to question it, I figure. And they're very small. It's not a big deal, okay? <laughs> that was a big what? deal. Yesterday sucked ass, okay? Yesterday, I streamed. I had tons of fun streaming, and we had great streams together. I did raise stuff on the streams. It wasn't that you guys didn't contribute. You did, but it was all negated by chargebacks. That's not cool. Putting out a full day of fun gameplay and work, honestly, and getting nothing for it. Imagine you went to work one day, and you, know, you, had, you, you felt like you did a lot of great productive stuff, and you get told, well, you're just not getting paid for today. Oh, thanks. Yeah, but sounds like something. there's a there's a big difference, you know, between working at a company and working as whatever the fuck he pretends he is. There's a very very big difference, Bill. Great, right? And yeah, it wasn't. It's not even that the people who enjoyed your content did contribute. It was taken from you. Oh yes. 
Okay. So, so you actually got paid, but then somebody robbed you on your way home. I guess that's, that's the equivalent, if you actually had a job, which makes it very complicated. <clears throat> Pretty fucked up. So, I'm not going to dwell on this all day long. I'm not. But I'm just being honest enough from you guys like I always am. Yesterday sucked because of that. Today, it would be nice if I could make up some of that, considering I'm a whole day in the hole here for the week. Um... Darkside Elon cheered. Darkside Elon. Says, if big highlight channels demonetize their content, would you view them differently? Wouldn't it be free advertisement for the streams then? If it I was wouldn't stream, matter. I like videos of me getting thousands of views daily, sending people to my Twitch. Uh, allow me to clarify something. All right. Phil of 2020 is not the same of Phil of 2012. A lot has changed in the last eight years since this is how you don't play started on YouTube. I really don't give two shits. If people make this is how you don't play videos, why would I care about that? You know, everyone says I suck at games. I don't care. I don't. I don't care anymore. Um, he doesn't care. care about. Wow, that's Actual that's innovative. Hurtful slander. Me, like what? These people who think that they're like what? Claiming that he rage quit games? Claiming that he begged whenever he begs? I don't know what the hurtful slander can be. Funny. Saying shit about my family. And also, like, right, if you care about your reputation so much, why don't you actually defend it instead of impotently just kind of sitting there and not being able to do anything? Why don't you go on a, on a call with somebody and just tell them they're fucking wrong? They should stop doing it. But because he's like, he's really good at cutting promos, but not actually getting anything done from them. No, no result. If he really cares so much about slander, go have a have some kind of an action against it. Because there's plenty of, of shit people are saying about him, and he, he's got nothing to do about it. And that's why they keep saying shit. Nobody really takes him seriously enough to, to like, watch what they're saying about him. My wife making shit up about me abusing my cat. Oh, no. Right. Saying really fucked up things that are not true at all. Zero substantiation. But they have made that into an actual part of their content, like a meme that runs through their content. That's not funny. It the is. The difference between Phil sucks at Memes games. are funny. Yes, they are. Let's highlight all the times that Phil's terrible on his streams and bad at games. That's fine. That's content. Well, that of I course, I mean, of course it's not funny to him because, well, he, he gets the, he gets to take the, the actual joke. It's on him, but it's funny for everybody else and he does nothing about it. So I don't see any reason to stop doing it. Out there get that's 100 truthful because it's there in front of you right even if you show it out of context for example there are very much people who will, who will act like when i play a, a from software game that all i do is fail here's phil die every death from demon souls and they'll just show the death they won't show okay here's a boss he beat on the first shot but who here's cares about that he growl he was parrying well at the beginning of the play because like what what why would you expect people would do that because the whole video is the interesting parts which is him failing because he fails and he gives a reaction from it. Why would he think somebody would watch a video that has positive moments here? Somebody who apparently the, the demographic for these videos are people who don't like DSP and like leave a comment saying, oh man, like it was really funny when he failed at the Guardian Ape in, in Sekiro like 15 times, but then beat this other boss on the first try. He's actually not terrible at games. Matter of fact, he might just be a little bit below average instead. Wow. Come on. on. They won't show any of that. They'll just show the bad parts. Is that missing? And also, why, if, if there's so many people, or at least a couple, a couple of people, uh, who really love his content, why, where are the fan videos? Where are the videos of Phil having awesome moments with chat, cool, you know, organic uh, things that happen when he's streaming and everybody make, has fun? It's almost like... Not only are people not interested in watching them, they're not even interested in, in making them. And the people that are interested in making them, like Arkham used to be, the guy who used to make his shorts for him, they're now gone. Or they make stuff for, for DSP's channel, so they get taken advantage of and they get exploited. So yeah, that's, that's what happens to the people that actually want to make positive content about him. They make it and they send it to him so he can put it up on his channel and make money from it. That's super positive, Phil. I love your community. Representative of my content? Yes, but at the very same time... Okay, Snort. at the very same time, 
when you make a this is how you don't play video, the people who are watching it should be smart enough to realize that's what the video is. Yes. It's a highlight of the worst moment. Yeah, that's literally what Dang. it says in the title. Like, why would you think anybody would be surprised? It's this is how you don't play. Uh, big ups Dust Bunny DX. Dark side fill a pig married to a horse named Cat who eats like a cow. And they also have a son who is a cow who is called a human named Jasper. So it's a whole ass circus. You see? Um, so that being said, okay. Which vest? You want to highlight the worst of me, best. go ahead. But then don't make shit up. And that's the problem. That's where I feel these people who make negative content about me constantly, that's what they don't understand. I'll give you a perfect example here. Let's see it. Earlier this year with the whole bankruptcy thing, all right? That was something that was very painful to me. That was something that was personal. A painful bankruptcy. Public. It had to go public because there were going to be public documents. And, of course, people were going to get wind of it, meaning that I'm a, pub a, a public personality, right? I don't. I, I have a private life, but sadly, when you do file something for bankruptcy, it goes public. Okay. So people were going to know about this no matter what, all right? Um, but the fact that people made up so much fake shit about me you're like what no basis that that he's a liar is that what he means and it the, the thing is like you can be a casual dsp observer and still be a hundred percent sure that he's a liar and he just committed fraud lying about all this shit factual basis for factual the shit basis up about me they literally fabricated insane stories about me and like then what? sent those stories to the parties involved in my bankruptcy to try to get the bankruptcy not to go through. All right, I just want you to think about this for a second. How crazy that is. Now, I'm not saying, by the way, that it was the highlight channels that did that. It's not the people who make oh. negative content about me. On Wait, YouTube. so so now those people are kind of okay? And they didn't... Because he started talking about them, and now we, we flipped back to... It's somebody else who did it. So who is your problem with exactly? Just the trolls in general? You who did that specifically. He doesn't even know who he got beef with. Somebody that lied about him. We? They don't even have like a fake internet name like mine. They just don't don't get a name. It's some idiot. But you have to understand something. When your channel constantly slanders someone, lies about someone, or just pushes conspiracy theories without a factual basis, when all you do is sit there and make drama content about someone, there are dumb people. There are dumb people out there who believe it as a fact. Okay? There are dumb ass people who are so gullible, they won't understand that you're just memeing. I, I fail to see how that is exactly my responsibility. Because then you can flip the argument on him and make it about how Phil is actually influencing people in a harmful way every time he rants about stuff. Every time he calls somebody a mouth drooling moron, he's giving them an example of how they should act in real life. Because he's saying it and he's getting away with it. Not only is he getting away with it, he's being quote unquote successful because he claims he's successful, right? So this argument applies even more so to him because he is supposed to be somebody with a reputation and not some fucking idiot on the internet like I am. He's supposed to be a guy doing this for a living and he's out there calling people mouth droolers? Really? That's that's setting a really bad example, Philip. They won't understand that you're trying to make a joke on someone's expense to get by yourself. All right, and I mean that. There are some. He means it, you guys. Who actually, think Serious. everything you say is true, and those people will then take the shit that you're pushing, and they'll try to fuck with people's lives. That's exactly what happened to me. Do I think that it was, uh, LSB or Tevin? Or LSB you know, gets a, a, a super shout out in this one. That's great. Cruz. Where the fuck these people Oh, wow. And so much Julius Cruz, too. Names people repeat them like parrots in my chat. Oh, and he knows. Uh, Do what? I believe that it was those people who specifically. But why, why you let people talk about other guys that ruin your life in your own chat, dude? Are you perpetuating it? Are you telling him that that's okay? Oh, Phil. We can use so much of his logic against him, and it's really fun took their conspiracy theories about me and sent them to the people involved in my bankruptcy case to try to fuck my life over. No, I don't think that happened at all. 
I think what happened is they thought it was funny. They thought, oh man, look, I'm getting extra viewers on my streams. The more drama I talk about, so let's just blow this story up. And oh, then they yes. got other people involved. They got internet internet lawyers and shit involved. Internet lawyers? Well, like like there. Rikita? Well, he's, he's kind of a real lawyer, as far as I know. He's not just an internet lawyer. Fucking full of shit. Everyone just speculated with no facts. Okay. Okay? For their own personal gain for like three months. It was like the hot topic of these idiots was to completely slander me and make shit up about me. And it really screwed me over this year. Like, I talked about this okay. in my Thanksgiving video. In but wait, 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 wait. So, those people don't like you. And they caused something to screw you over. You know, those people that don't like you? Um, how are you exactly trying to make this seem like they didn't just win in this case? Because they... Obviously, they don't like the guy. They wanted to fuck with him. They did, whoever it was that did it. So they're successful. Detail, okay. And they knew they were going to fuck with him, obviously, since they reached out to, like, bankruptcy courts and shit, and, like, lawyers and, and judges. That was the intent, and they were successful, and now he's bringing it up to say, man, these people, they actually fuck with me, and, and they made it. Well, it wasn't successful because his bankruptcy went through, but them messing with him was successful because his bankruptcy call literally got restreamed on Twitch. And it was uh, astounding. It really it's hurt me phenomenal. This year because it drew out my bankruptcy proceeding way longer than it should have been. It cost me money. Money. Right? That I didn't have to spend. I had to spend to keep going because of that. Oh, this right? dude is such care, a though, pathetic shit. They made, they made out. They had months of content, okay. months of memes, Back. months of income from a bunch of drama queen idiot viewers. So they don't care that it actually hurt me to do the shit that they did. But no, they, right. they wanted to hurt you, bro. They didn't give a fuck about hurting you. You should take care of yourself. So people on the internet, so you're not that easy to hurt. It's because it's the, his whole thing is that everybody hurts him because he's like the easiest guy to hurt ever. All you need to do is just say gout in his fucking comments and he's going to be hurt. He's like the softest dude. So maybe try making yourself harder to hurt and then people are going to dramatically stop hurting you. And that's you're, you're, you're going to see difference there's a difference. Between, I don't like Phil, so I'm just going to make this is how you don't play make fun of his gameplay. Fine. You want to make highlights of stupid shit I do on my streams? That's public shit that I put out there. Go ahead and do it. And now All he's right, trying to see. tell him what they can and can't do. Which, of course, we talked about this before. This is one of the, the rules of the internet. Is you can't tell people on the internet what they should do. Because it makes them want to do the opposite. Because right now, I really feel like I want to be spreading some slander about him. Just, just because he's crying so much about it. He's being an obnoxious asshole. I'm terrible at games. and make It make makes me want to say something about his cat. Or his wife. A highlight montage of me sucking at Demon Souls. Go right ahead. But the moment you talk about my family. Okay, your wife is fat content. and stupid. The moment you go behind the scenes of my streams and you try to pull shit out of thin air that's not true, but you push it as some kind of fact, even though it's just some weirdo conspiracy theory, you've actually. Uh, Cat has divorced him, you guys. I'm 100% sure now. By watching this video from 2020, I am sure cat has divorced him so there you go, go we, we checked that box as well onto the, the realm of what do they call it and also it's she's fat psychopath it's uh, nothing i could do what sociopath? sociopath no it's not you only care about getting yourself over and making out for yourself and you what is this wrestlemania her doing that i was concretely hurt earlier this year by these people doing okay. fucked up stuff making stuff up about me so they are basically successful right now, now he's telling everybody how successful they were, so they could keep going. Family members, kind of the opposite, because remember when he when he talks about chargebacks and how he wins all of them, and he got a little smug smile on his face. That's actually the right way to go about it, because you're you're telling people that the way they're trying to fuck with you is not working, even though it's, if he's bluffing and it's just nonsense and it low key he loses all the chargebacks, he should want you to think that he wins them, so you start sending chargebacks. Because this is like the opposite line of logic, saying that those people that want to hurt me, they actually are successful. But they, they didn't care about it, and I don't expect them to start caring about it, so I guess they're going to hurt me more. Because there's, I've told you at this point, there's nothing that you, you can do to stop them. So there you go, I guess I'll keep getting hurt. Yeah. Well, 
Nice. It took time, money, stress. It took a lot out of me earlier this year. It really did to be able to survive that. A lesser person maybe wouldn't have been able to. Oh, yes. It was not easy. I, was I, I can't think of many lesser people than DSP, so I, I'll give him that point because I, I just can't make a counter argument completely stressed out to my wits end i thought that i was possibly going to lose everything in my life everything i could have lost everything everything <clears throat> okay his wife too because he's actually he, he's acting like uh his wife would leave him if he lost the house which would kind of validate one of the theories that she's just there for the benefits he's just there for the for this it's all for this did that all right you people who did that shit you don't understand how much that that takes out of someone? You don't. You just think, okay. ah, it's Phil. Eh, whatever. Make fun of him, meme on him. Yeah, you know, fuck that, dude. dude you that's, hurt me. That's that's Why? what they what want. Ever do to fucking you, man. This year, I'm trying oh, to help fuck. these people out. These people are getting false copyright strikes. Oh, yeah. This was it when he was stepping up for people. I'm trying to do what I can. No, he was trying to basically. Um, just absolve himself of any guilt. Because I don't believe he was doing it. It was somebody else exploiting the DMCAs. And DSP need to get out of clean from that because he need, he looks really guilty because it seems like he is doing it. To go out of my way. We're just looking after his own ass. To help these people so that they don't lose their YouTube channels, they don't lose their Twitter accounts. If I have an opportunity to counter something, like when YouTube writes me an email and says, was this you? I say, no, stop this immediately. I mean, how many public statements and posts saying it's not me, stop it. I'm trying to actually help the fucking people who earlier this year tried to actually hurt me through their actions. And again, do they think that it actually hurts me? No, they think, oh, the life's all jokes, man. Life's, life's just a joke. So meme it up. And it, it meme it up. We do. We have no responsibility for anything. For Get anything. the baby oil. Meme it up. As long as we had some fun streams and fun videos, and we made out, made out, made money on it. Who cares how who it hurts, right? That's that's being a sociopath. I would and honestly, I would, I, I, I would like to make the statement. I don't give a rat's ass if anything I say or do on the internet hurts Dark Side Phil. I do not give a fuck. These people are. They ignore. Just so you have it as a recorded statement. Morality. Because it benefits them. Because, like, oh. if if something that I did hurts him or something that I said hurts him, then he's too too easily hurtable. He's too vulnerable, and that's that's his problem. He should focus on himself. So, Dark Side Elon, I don't give two shits about the highlight channels existing. Let them exist. I, I could have, myself, tried to strike these channels down many, many years ago if okay. I really cared about it that much. I don't do it. I don't care. Let them exist and do whatever they want. It's very true. There are people on a daily basis come in here and say, wow, Phil, I actually che uh, checked out <clears throat> um, your content for the first time because someone was making fun of you. But then I came over here and actually I like your stuff and now I'm a fan, right? This happens wow. every day I hear someone talk. It happens every day. That's cool, man. I appreciate that. Oh, right come on, man. Shot. How how fucking gullible you know, are you? Watching someone shitting on me constantly and then they realize, it's like, that's not if it happens every day and your channel is still not growing... And there is actually no result of this thing that you can see that is happening every day. Then people are fucking lying to you, you dumbass. So true. Okay. Um, but there comes a point when that kind of activity, when it crosses a line, is actually hurting me. And when, again, personal shit about my family members behind the scenes has nothing to do whatsoever with, with my content or... <clears throat> Conspiracy theories and well, apparently it does. No actual concrete facts, but just spec. Uh, the the whole thing with nothing to do with my content is inherently wrong. It's a flawed argument down to the actual foundation of it, because his content and his life has always been intertwined, and it still keeps going. The moment he stops talking about his stupid day off and the, all the bills he has to pay on the day, we might start making some progress. But for now, there's no chance this is gonna happen. Because we still keep hearing about how he got sick and that fucked him up. And how his wife is sick now and how much that all sucks. So he really needs a financial stimulation to feel good today, guys. But it's pushed as fact. Those things hurt me badly. Badly. And they don't realize that because they don't care. All yeah. All they the money they made doing it. Well, not really. That's where I draw the line. It's it's all, right. all good. I'm not so going to complain about it. I, I never have, have, but that's not all I care about. You know, why, you, Phil, why fundamentally, you fundamentally, I just care about having fun.
and by extension, putting out some shit that somebody else is going to have fun with. But primarily, I'm thinking about, I'm looking at this guy, and I'm like, yeah, I want to have fun watching his stupid shit. Put all those detractors down, because I don't, I don't fucking care. Let them do what they want. I just wish they would grow up and actually have a conscience and realize that, you know, there's a line that you don't cross, right? <clears throat> It kills me when he tries to use these manipulative tactics on people who can see right through his bullshit. The people who he's talking about trying to fuck him up on his bankruptcy are the people from Kiwi Farms. And the only thing they did was expose the fact that he was straight up lying on his documents to help swing their decision in his favor. Not only that, but the fact that he was spending thousands on top of thousands on a fucking mobile game while sitting on his stream crying about donations and acting like he was going yeah, for 24-7. The highlight channels that he goes on about only help showcase this information to their audience to help prove how much of a fucking liar he can be. He also wants to spin it as people only doing this for donations and views on YouTube, but there are plenty of channels who have their monetization turned off, and the main sure. people who are exposing you on this shit. And again, if you want to go the other way and just put ads on everything, that's fine with me, dude. You gotta take responsibility for the way you run your channel, uh, either way. You monetize, don't monetize, it's your responsibility in the end of the day to do it properly in a way that people are not going to be bothered. Me personally, I got ad blog, so it doesn't matter who puts what, I never get to see it. Didn't make a sense. It's very positive, shout out to ad blog. If you want to monetize your content, then I believe you should. As long as you're making proper content or not locking specific information behind paywalls. And no one feel. He should know that he's the last person that should preach about morality with all the multitude of lies and scams he's pulled on his gullible fan base. And speaking about straight up lying to his fan base, we get into more PayPal talk and Phil claiming that he doesn't see any of the information oh, that wow. sent him a tip with a verified All right, this, this has been debunked um, years ago, so I don't have much to say about it, uh, except first name, last name, and email. That's what you get to see on PayPal. Yeah, you can make it so you are showing basically fake info that is is not what it's supposed to be but his whole argument is that he doesn't see anything and then the argument transforms in i get to see whatever you are sending me you know whatever info you chose to attach but the info that you kind of need to put in to be able to send anybody any kind of money is first name last name email just so you know um verified accounts give me extra protection all right when there's a verified account involved it means that the, the chances of any kind of fraud are incredibly lessened because that's real info from a real person. And if someone tries to say, oh, you know, well, that's not, I didn't mean to do that or whatever. It's like, well, wait a minute. You're, it's your real name. It's your real address. It's your real bank account. Unless you're saying you have a five-year-old child who somehow slipped into your office, jumped on Phil's stream, and knew your PayPal info and sent this tip, you know, I, you don't have really a leg to stand on. You know what I mean? Um... The anonymous credit card tips are ridiculous. There's like no pr protection for that shit at all. It's just like, oh, someone sent an anonymous tip, and if there's a chargeback, there's a chargeback, you're fucked, you know? Um, but that's what I mean. Like, with these verified um, accounts, it's much safer for me as a content creator, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, when you tip me, I get nothing, all right? Yeah, like, there you I go. See the name, that's the name you chose when yeah. you tipped me. I, I get nothing. I name or not. I get All nothing, right. but so, I get your first name, last name, email. Sometimes I'll get an email address. Sometimes. Sometimes I won't. Yeah. Okay? Sometimes it's nothing. You have zero info. Okay? Zero. If it's, a, if it's a credit card checkout, I get no information at all. It just says, like, if it's a Visa or MasterCard or whatever. That's all it says. I get no information. No name, no number, nothing. No, I've never, ever, in once ever, in the history of making stream content, seen someone's address because they tipped me. Yeah, that's the stupidest I mean, that's... thing I've ever fucking heard. Okay. That info was protected by PayPal. Uh, they... What about email address, though? Because I don't know who made this argument about the address because they just gave them ammo to call them idiots and liars. Because, like, nobody thought you would see somebody's physical address on PayPal. You would get sued into oblivion. Yeah, I don't if know. Someone that's sent just... you the info every time that they sent you a payment. You can't do that. <clears throat> but that might just happen. be him. And Jumping no, to the extremes to make the if there's a verified to make the argument make some kind of sense. The person chooses to disclose their information when they send that payment is what I get. That's it. Why do people have this insane notion that people are doxing themselves when they send a, a contribution to a streamer? No, that's because you're stupid and you're you're passing conspiracy theories around the internet to try to say a streamer can't get support. Fuck off. Stop spreading around misinformation. Okay.
Oh, that was a great fucking segment. So, what I'm going to say is, at this point, I don't see any reason to not believe this tip is real. It might not be, <laughs> but... And we're doing a, a tip now, audit again. And count it for the stream. But what I will say is this, guys, you know, we got to understand, this very well may be fake. I don't know who John is. All right, I'm just going to say John B. All right. Johnny B, bro, you don't know? John B, if this is a, a, What's wrong a with you? And again, I apologize. Giant fucking segment on my pre-stream dedicated to this because of it. All right. Please understand this could be very well be fake. So if you were someone who was thinking of contributing today, and I was like, ah, oh, it feels fine now. I don't have to contribute. Oh, what? It's not the case. It's very well maybe fake. It could be charged oh, back. Oh, man. Right away, it could be charged back. You what know what I mean? What a fucking oh. slimy piece of shit. What a fucking slime ball. Hey, you think I don't need any more support? No. This might get taken away from me. So please make sure to give me money, just in case. Just in case. Because you, you never know. Something bad might happen. Um, God I damn it. I see a tip come through from an unverified fucking fraud. PayPal account. Usually it's either a verified PayPal account or it's a anonymous credit card. It's one or the other. I almost never see it like this. Okay? So, what a I guess we'll count it. We already have a vest pull what going a in the street. maniac. Chat. But... Please understand, if you were going to contribute, don't say, oh, because this is what happens, sadly. Sometimes people will look and say, wow, Phil got a lot of tips today. That means he doesn't need any support today, right? Um, and then guess what happens? He gets charged back, and it means I mean nothing. Zero. And that's fucking shit, you know? Um, so I hope this is real. And thank you to, to John if this is real. I appreciate the support. I hope you like the content. <laughs> I have no idea who you are. Thanks for the money if you really gave it to me, but if you want it back... No thanks. I, I don't thank you for the money. Right? Sure. And it sucks that I can't give you a proper thank you or even say, oh, I trust you. It sucks. I hate, I even had to talk about this on the fucking stream. It's, sh it's shitty that I had to. It actually okay. really is. Um, Because <clears throat> now you're making yourself that, even more, even less trustworthy. That's life, I guess, is that I kind of have to <laughs> judge and say, you know, what's the risk here? Right? Um. Now... I just received another tip, and this one Oops. supposedly is from Randy O. Butternub. But is it Question supposedly? Is, is, is it real? Even here today, and did they really send this tip? Oh my god! <laughs> well, now, why wouldn't you want to do this to him more when you see him acting like this? Doesn't it just make you want to do it naturally? Just like, cause I'm feeling now, I'm like, man, I I wish I fucking felt like doing this shit. It would make him cry so much. This fucking asshole. Randy, are you here today? <clears throat> Randy? Hello? And again, I'm sorry that I have to do nope. it this way. Again, I'm, I'm sorry we gotta derail everything to check if uh, somebody really gave me money or they're faking. But it's a thing we have to do Randy's for society. Here. I don't uh, see Randy not, not even here, in the stream dude. chat. Right? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, what the fuck? All right. Yep. He's still Randy's doing it. Confirmed it's fake. So there you go. Yeah. At least Randy's well, here. Thanks. Thank you, Randy. I appreciate you responding. So this is the problem, you see? So I get a $100 tip. Don't know if it's real or not, right? Talk about it for a while. Explain to my, my viewers. Please Talk about my tips. Now. So what does a person do? I'm going to send a fake tip right now just to fuck Phil over, right? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm just thinking. Just in case that tip was real, let's send him a, a, a fake tip to fuck Phil over. What a nice person this person is, right? <laughs> Unfucking believable yeah imagine imagine being such a fucking fake bitch you're trying to convince the internet that you're a nice person that's some like really stupid fucking virtue signaling i i will never understand it i guess i kind of understand it because he's like a public personality but his his the reputation is so fucking dead why even bother at this point just say yeah fuck it i'm a piece of shit the people that like me for who i am gonna stick around the ones that they that do we don't give a fuck. We're not going to try and, and convince him otherwise. But I guess for him, it's really important. Well, thank you, Randy. He gets, for, the, for he gets the virtue signal on disabled people on the internet. That's a true privilege. Something everybody is uh, really grateful to be able to have. Yeah, I appreciate that. All right, we got more shout-outs. Dragon Man resell for six months. Says, Thanks to Django Pops for my sub-gift. Uh, yeah, I think he had, you were saying he had um, originally... Gifted you with the sub or, or whatever, and now you're continuing it. Awesome. Thank you for that. Dracon Man, of course, thank you, Django Pops, for the original support. Lady Just Strike resub for two months. Thank you very much, Lady Just Strike, for two months of support. Appreciate that. Big Bad Buffoon 
Did a hundred bit cheers. I remember when you drew and John and Joe had a fatal three-way. You played Scott Pilgrim Co-op ten years ago. The 10th anniversary Ultimate Edition of the game is releasing in January. Are you going to replay it and reminisce? No. Number one, I don't think Scott Pilgrim has been re relevant in about a decade. <laughs> right? And number two, that was a co-op game, you know, for couch co-op, and I don't do couch co-op anymore. So, if you want to see the playthrough of the game, you can watch it from when it came out 10 years ago. Yeah, I things do. I'm replaying that game. Chimera Dog Cheers says the streamers playing Cyberpunk are not chosen to lead. They email the publisher's PR department and ask for a copy. Okay. That's how they get free early copy. That's cool. Um, I just said that. What about... My God, you don't listen. Some people are deaf. I swear to... But it's like, dude... Now, this is, this is one of his biggest problems. And this is why many people don't listen to his opinion. Is that he spends way too long trying to make a point. To the point where he's just like talking himself in circles, not making any sense, uh, losing people's attention because he's not good at talking enough and he's not interesting to, to listen to speak. And then things like this happen when nobody really knows what the actual point he was trying to make is because he made like 15 different points. And he's also really trying, uh, like I talked about earlier, he's trying not to offend somebody while insulting them. So it makes everything even more watered down and making even less sense. God. Did I'm going to get myself a coffee and then I'll be back. And maybe I'll switch to some different game. Who fucking knows? Do not hear my whole segment where I said, I know I could get a copy of the game. Here's what I would do. I would contact the PR department. I would explain who I am, the reach that I have, the fact that I'm a content creator for as long as I am, and blah, blah, blah. And I, you know, that's how they get it. I literally just said that. I just fucking said that. Well, I mean, did I say that the publisher magically just sends out copies without any solicitation? No, that's the process you use to get it. That doesn't mean that because just because they sent out a qu request for it that they weren't selected to get it. There's a lot of people that, that request these games and don't get them. Okay? So there you go. Melody Zelda cheered 104 bits, which is the biggest cheer of the day. So do you think Twitch will be okay with you streaming Cyberpunk? Floppy penne in the game. Well, I'm playing the streamer, uh, the special streamer version that basically has no copywritten or licensed music and no nudity. So it will be fine. I'm doing it on purpose to purposely avoid any issues with this game on YouTube or Twitch. I just want to be able to play it and not get into trouble and not get fucking content ID matches and not get community strikes. I just want to play the fucking game. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, Bleach number nine cheered. He says, Cyberpunk tomorrow, don't don't give yourself a skin tag. You can go as big as you want. It's a video game. What? Well, I don't even know what that means, but thank you, Bleach. Um, Ninstar Rune cheered. He says, Sung Kwan says, how is John's tip real, but Randy's fake? John wasn't here to confirm if his was real or not. We got confirmation Randy's is fake. You understand that they're like, John is uncertain. We don't know if it's real or not. So we'll count it, right? Um... But, you see what I'm saying? Like, if we had confirmation one's wrong or fake, don't count it. There's a difference between, it's, it's uncertainty versus certainty it's fake. That's how. Um, Angelo Bestia, are you here today and did you tip me? I think you are and I think you did. It seems legit. But, um, I just want to verify before I give any kind of a shout out here. Just in case this is not you and I don't want to get, misrepresent you. But I do believe that you did actually just hit me. Um, debunked DSP fan just cheered and said, Coming over from YouTube, I missed the day's YouTube comment section was open. Can you turn comments back on? Hey, what's up, Burnells and Eggers? I'm back. What do we got? We, we still on the chargeback shit? Please, please don't. No! Yeah, that's what I mean. I turned the comments off for a very good fucking reason. Okay? A very good fucking reason. As in, the actual fans and viewers of the content demanded it. Because there was such toxicity in the comments and I wasn't going to sit Oh, we're there talking about the YouTube comments being deleted, comments huh? On a daily basis. So because of that, I was actually requested uh. to just fucking, you know, end it all. Turn it off. And I did. And because of that, we avoided any kinds of problems. Okay? Um... And it's been years, by the way. Wasn't it? Hasn't it been about three years now? I'm trying to remember. Was it 2017 or 2018 when I turned off the YouTube comments? But 
it's an archive of the streams. It's that simple. It says these idiots want to misuse YouTube for malicious reasons, and I don't have a team of people to fucking moderate my comments. It just means there's no comments, and it doesn't affect anything in a negative way at all. And what happened after that? Because, uh, you know, he loves not keeping all of his eggs in one basket, but that's what he was doing back in the day uh, when YouTube was just a dumping ground. It was basically just just a landfill of content. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even call it content. I hate the word content of YouTube videos. And at some point, he got banned on Twitch from, he got kicked out of the partnership program. Okay, let's not spread misinformation. And he came back to the landfill and he had to transform that landfill into like a utopian city and basically, you know, fix the channel. And then it was the campaign. Let's let's get DSP gaming back to prominence. Uh, and that's still going on, by the way, because um, it's all downward. It's all going down. It's a positive thing. To it's to, a positive thing to make it so that they can't do their malicious shit in the comments. I'm not turning the comments back on. That would be insanely stupid. And by the way, Angelo Bestia did not confirm that this is their tip. In fact, I believe that they're not even here today. Therefore, that tip does not count. So there you go. It's another imposter, faker, piece of shit right <clears throat> pretty stupid um but it is what it is i guess right okay all right um let's see here i got confused i'm in the wrong screen oh man well when do we move on to the next one what is the next saga though because now we're on uh 2020 post bankruptcy i think Oh, yeah, and we got the line app. Oh, yes, this is going to be good. There's some, there's some, like, app. Like, I don't even know, man. And then a year later, he knew everything about 2FA. He was, like, the biggest fan of 2FA. So. So what that's going to do is it's going to send me a, a code on my app. And then I'll be able to um, log in. Let's see here. Hallelujah, he reigns. Just sent me $25, and this is legit. And he says the following. He is skeptical. Let me let me read his whole thing. What are they skeptical of, dude? That $100 tip for, for a tip from John. <laughs> it's easy for someone to make an old PayPal account. What? Oh, any old PayPal account. And now they're everybody just collectively being paranoid about this guy getting fake tips. That's what he does. He gets everybody paranoid. And then... In turn, they get him paranoid because then they, they, they come back to him with messages like this. And then he gets even more suspicious and he starts talking about like some really paranoid shit. And then everybody else gets more paranoid. It's a vicious cycle. And in between all those people that get paranoid, there's people that pretend like they're paranoid. They're low-key covert trolls. They're, they're pulling a very deep op. It's suspicious that no bank account is linked to it, especially if they tipped $100. Here's a real tip from a real verified account. Yes, thank you. Hallelujah, he reigns. Now, here's the thing. you When you make a PayPal account, all right, um, but it's unverified, that doesn't mean that a bank account isn't linked to it. And in fact, I'm almost positive in this case there one is because it didn't mention that it was paid by a credit card. Usually, if a tip is paid by any kind of a credit or debit card, it'll at least say that. It won't give you the info. It won't give you the card or anything. It'll just say, oh, this was a, a, a credit card transaction or something like that. This tip was not. This tip actually says it was from a PayPal account uh, that is unverified, but it's registered. <clears throat> okay. So it is what it why, is. Why do you think I should um, care about this I guess this all we can do is place. experiment, right? Keep in mind. Oh, I, I kind of figured out. To deal with this um, the only oh. reason why he thinks you should care about this is, like he already said, if you thought that he made enough money and you shouldn't support him, you're wrong. Recently, right? It wasn't until like two, three months ago that some malicious parties came in here with literal f stolen credit card numbers, constantly putting in fake tips. So this is all an experiment right now, okay? Um, you know, I would say I, since... I can't verify nor... I can't confirm or deny if this is real. All right? I'm going to leave it for now. 
but let's use it as an experiment. Now, now it's been documented. I talked about it for how long today. We know the situation. So if this ends up getting charged back, we can use this as verification if this is fake or not, right? And if it does happen, now I would know, okay, don't really accept that kind of tip in the future because it seems like that's just as risky as the credit card shit, right? That's my take on it anyway. Because uh, I don't know. This could be someone who's just a casual viewer. They, wow, I really want to support Phil. They did it. Oh, yeah, man. I really want to support chat. Phil. They don't want to maybe get into, you know, what happens when people contribute and then they chat. What do they, what out. happens? Maybe they get the killed? I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Oh. Okay. So we'll see what happens. We'll use it as a test case. It's very rare. And like I said, it's very rare that this would happen. Usually, when a tip comes through, it's either going to be that anonymous credit card shit or it comes from a verified account. And almost never do I get unverified PayPal account payment. Like, it's very rare. So. Oh my God. I let's move on right from now. this. Anyway, BSB. Hallelujah. He reigns for the legit tip. That is Wow. He legitimately because, can't stop you know, like talking said, about this. What if this $100 shit? is completely fake then? Yeah. What if it's, it's like not real? Nothing. So thank you for that. So he's giving him like a um, half a half uh half thank you debunked dsp fan cheer he says why is the number three person on the cheering leaderboard missing oh i don't even know i couldn't tell you because on my cheering leaderboard everything shows so i don't know what to tell you there's no one missing on my cheering leaderboard but i don't know what to tell you all right <laughs> okay um oh it was rosalina flower who knows it could be many things. It could be that 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 account was banned for some reason. That happens. It could be they decided. I'm, to I'm straight up now. skipping this, man. Fuck this. Fuck sure. this. Fucking unhinged yeah. schizophrenic discussion. Okay, we're back to this. I think this is gonna be better. Fascinated you today, if you can believe. Man, the local nomad is an A. Excuse me. So please. Um. Please. Zelda cheered. He said, it's funny to see Angry Joe no. streaming Cyberpunk with full-on nudity. That okay. He won't get mass reported by morons on the internet. Oh, right. mass reported, of course. So there'll be no issue with him doing that. With anything that I do that even toes the line of something that could be risky, I, I can't do. Because the risky be, like what? Saying racist stuff? For me playing Cyberpunk, even when I don't have it, they'll still say I have it. Oh, oh my fuck. God, did you see the nudity on Phil's stream? And they'll report the stream. They're like, what are you talking about? It's, <laughs> I have streamer mode on right but that's that's it's true <clears throat> yes that's true it's just like people get away with shit all the time because they don't have toxic idiots following them around the internet yeah but why do they have toxic idiots following them in the first place because they tried to get away with shit and they actually did come on man and it's everybody else's fault again it's everybody else's fault they're denying him success while he actively digs his own grave and jumps in it head first every single well, day. I do, so it is what Give it me is. a fucking break. <clears throat> how long, like, okay, how old does he have to get for people to start, uh, to, to stop actually buying this bullshit that everybody else fucked him over? How many second chances does he need to get? Because as, as far as I see it, he gets a brand new second chance on a daily basis. When he shows up and he has the ability to do whatever he is, and he doesn't change one bit. Timbo says, should I play Cyberpunk How much more? at 6 p.m. on PC or wait until midnight? Why would you wait until midnight? Play it when it unlocks, right? Why on earth would you wait until midnight? <laughs> if it unlocks on PC at 6 p.m., play it at 6. <clears throat> okay. Why, yeah, why would he actually right, wait guys, until so, midnight? Maybe because he's a DSP uh, fan. That is it for the pre-stream. Let's end it. I take a break to use the bathroom. All right. And uh, I'll be back. Three... New hours of fun Yakuza 7 gameplay right around the corner. And I hope to see you for that. I hope you're not going to ditch me now because the, the, the pre-stream's over. Okay. All right. I shall be back. Thank you and see you in a few minutes. Now after doing oh, research, thank God this is over. I didn't see anything about getting the address of whoever tips you on PayPal. You do in fact get their name and email address. So I don't understand why Fear had to lie about something so Because uh, it's a straw man. Another thing I don't understand about the whole chargeback saga is how will Phil lose money that he never really had in the first place? If $100 gets charged back, that doesn't mean that $100 gets taken out of Phil's bank account. He just never really had the $100 to begin with. Uh, well, not, not really. Because what he does is he transfers all that money from PayPal to his bank account, so the PayPal is at zero. And then somebody does a chargeback, and usually they do it 
way after the fact to make sure that he's going to have zero. And it puts him in the minus. So they basically just took the money from it because the money wasn't there to begin with. Only someone like DSP could turn something so simple as tipping a streamer into a convoluted mess and force his fans to put up with it. And if you try to ask him any questions about it, he'll get upset because Phil doesn't like it when you ask questions that seem like they're doubting his logic. Thorns like Elon did two cheers that are all about PayPal and personal shit about how PayPal works and behind the scenes stuff. Uh, Dark side Elon, how about this? How about you mind your own fucking business? What? <laughs> how about that? How about instead of asking about stolen credit card numbers and shit like this, how about you just listen to what I have to say and either believe me or don't? Oh, yeah. Stop asking <laughs> insanely detailed questions about how PayPal works. But wait, 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 wait. If he doesn't believe you, he should just shut up, right? He shouldn't challenge what you're saying if he doesn't believe you. He should just shut up. That's it. You listen to me, you either agree or disagree. If you agree, you keep quiet. If you disagree, you keep quiet. That doesn't sound like a very good idea, if I gotta be honest. It sounds like you're trying to keep somebody silent so they don't reveal something you don't want public. Because no one else fucking cares. No one else cares, the apparently. The reason you're asking is because you don't believe me. You think I'm some kind of a liar. I'm fabricating yeah. all this stuff. Well, fuck off then. If you don't believe me, then you can leave. You don't have to be. Oh, yeah, okay. Right? Stop being a dick. Wait, wait. If you if no, you don't believe me, go away. So I only have people surrounding me that believe me and agree with me, also known as yes men. Because if anything, everybody knows that surrounding yourself with yes men is a super productive thing you have to do. So when you say something stupid, everybody can just keep quiet. And when you execute an idea that is really bad and it gets you in trouble, uh, it's only your fault because nobody else told you that it was a shitty idea. That, that's how it should be. It's like... People are going to ask these insanely detailed questions about the ins and outs of how tipping and PayPal work. Well, you should well, fucking... One, you're not you should know how it works. It. You don't need to understand it. Number two, obviously you're asking me that because you don't believe me because you're a fucking dickhead. Oh, uh, I sit here and lie my all day. God. Like, go, go watch the detractor stream where they talk... Every fucking line he says, every sentence has some kind of a fallacy or just pure bullshit. So this was like, you're not a streamer, you don't understand how tipping works. Then okay, Phil, you're the streamer, you've made... A uh, hundred, hundreds of thousands of dollars off streaming. Please tell me how it works. I really want to know how it works. And then we flip that onto, you're just asking because you don't believe me. You don't actually want more info. You just don't believe me. So you want to get me in a gotcha moment. That's the paranoid Phil. I love paranoid Phil. And then he just tells them, go watch the detractor stuff. So it, you're either on his side or you're officially a detractor. That's how open-minded he is. I guess he's like, uh, he's kind of like Kid Rock. He doesn't see color. He just sees everything in black and white. You piece of shit! I don't see color! Yeah, that, god damn it. That's great. The fuck along, shithead. Now, taking a quick break from talking about chargebacks, it was revealed that Phil had a court date on December 14th that was going over his foreclosure on his condo in Connecticut. When this was brought to Phil's attention on stream on December 8th, Phil claimed that he didn't know about this since no one had ever told him and tried to spin it as the trolls being stupid. But I think it really shows how irresponsible of an adult he is, that random people on the internet can keep up with this foreclosure case better than he can, even though he's the one that's supposed to be dealing with this. So Phil pulls the usual Phil move and tells all his detractors that they failed in trying to take him down, and how he's still successful on Twitch. What is this? An anonymous sub gets a sub to December 14th. Uh, what does that mean? What's December 14th? <laughs> I, I love, I love goes this phase of detracting. I think it might still be going on. When people used to put uh, fair use filters on their videos so they could be covered under fair use so they don't get like taken down and shit. And one of these filters that makes them look absolutely terrifying. Look at this. Right over my head. I have no Man, clue this is though. like, if, if I was on some prescription medication, I would lose my mind right now. That was zero. Looking at December this. December 14th is a new detractor meme. I have no idea what it means. The ETA of baby Burnell? Uh, no, I, there's no kids. So that's certainly not it. It's a court date? I don't have a court date on December 14th. To my knowledge, so yeah, someone just tipped, someone just gifted me a sub. It says court date. I'm serious. I'm dead serious. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Zero. I have no clue what you're talking about at all. <laughs> so it sounds to me like these people are trying to snoop behind the scenes into personal matters, and I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. I have absolutely no clue. Oh, and no this filter too. That I am dynamic. December fourteenth. 
All right. This the is only... where he kept the rods he'd loan out. The only thing so I can think of. Rod doing here. He always kept it separate. And this has nothing to do with the, the playthrough, so I'm not going to de derail this. Oh, it's for a foreclosure? Good! If that is the case, and they're actually foreclosing my Connecticut condo on the December 14th, I'm happy! That's a good thing. That would mean if they finally foreclose, I don't have to fucking pay the dues on the place anymore, and I'm finally done with it. Yes, I would be 100% done with it. But I, I'm serious about this. I don't know anything about it. No one told me anything about a court date on December 14th Dude, nobody told um, me. I am aware. Where, where am I being sued? Nobody told me. That, they, that, that the mortgage company was granted the ability to foreclose by a judge. That's all I know. I was never told that there would be anything else in regards to that. So this is hilarious because these people are like, giving me oh oh we're gonna really stick it to phil by giving gifting himself i don't even know what you're talking about i really don't have no clue <laughs> oh man i didn't know I yeah didn't you assholes you you help them by telling him when his court date is oh you tried to ruin him but actually it helped him because now he knows when he's supposed to show up for his court date take that haters but anyway, if it, again, this is what I mean. They like, they really obsess over stupid shit. If this is what it is, if that's what they're talking about, I'm happy. That means on December 14th, if there's a full foreclosure proceeding and it goes through, I'm free. Finally, I'm He's free. To, I'm done with that, that, that fucking bullshit of having to pay dues every yeah. month. Yeah. Fucking place that I don't, Hell don't, yeah. really don't have. And I give them he is free. He gets all that money that he spent that he couldn't pay his condo with. He gets it discharged and no, nobody is the wiser. He gets to win for once. That's epic. I love how much he celebrated getting a bankruptcy. Something that people do everything in their power to avoid. He's like, dude, this is great. I don't have to pay shit. I love it. I love life. Permission to foreclose. Such a triumphant like moment. Eight, nine months ago, and it just, they just dragged It's probably one of the here. highest Super points in his life. Getting a bankruptcy. On the 14th. I don't even know. I don't even know what else. When the, the thing is, he could have put a little bit of effort and made that condo somewhat livable and they just rented it out to somebody or at least attempted to do that because in that case instead of having to pay money that goes to nothing you would actually make money from nothing uh, like some people call it passive income this would be in regards to okay but i guess it was too much work so so he got it foreclosed instead and he had to pay all this money and go bankrupt i i think that was worth it way more Honestly, Wait, yeah. Carlos, you idiot. There's no deficiency judgment. There cannot be a deficiency judgment because I gave up the property during the bankruptcy. They agreed to it. Therefore, there's no way there could be a deficiency judgment. But, all right, here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say this very, very briefly. And I'm not going to talk about this anymore. Anyone who thinks they know better than people who do this for a living is a fucking idiot. Okay? It doesn't matter how much you hate me. Just Bro, you stream for a living and you're terrible at it. So I'm sorry that I'm questioning how other people do their jobs when they blatantly see a case where the dude just lied and there's proof of it and they just let him get, get away with it. I'm sorry for questioning it. I probably shouldn't. Just because somebody has a job, that doesn't make them good at what they do. They just kind of have a job. Just because you want to fantasize that something's going to ruin my life, it's not going to happen, all right? I have a lawyer. The lawyer did things during the course of my proceedings to make sure that things would happen in a certain way, okay? I, there's not going to be any ruling against me. There can't be legally because I'm fine. I did everything the proper way I was supposed to do to protect me from this kind of shit, okay? I'm not dumb. Why would I have given permission for them to go forward with the, with the, the foreclosure earlier this year if that wasn't what I wanted? But this is what I mean. These, these people on fucking Kiwi Farms sit there and microanalyze like they know anything. They don't know anything. They were wrong about the bankruptcy. And I, I also hate when he uses microanalyze because I'm not even sure that's like a usable term in this case. You can just say analyze. But he wants to make it seem like it's way more important, so he just says microanalyze. Every step of the way, every word that they said was absolutely wrong about the bankruptcy. They didn't know a thing about what they were talking about. They were completely wrong, and the bankruptcy was granted, just like it should have been. Now, oh, he's going to get a deficiency judgment against you. There's no deficiency. It doesn't exist. You can't have a deficiency when you gave up a property during a bankruptcy because you already relinquished the property, and they agreed to it. Therefore, they gave up any right to a deficiency judgment. That's why you give up the property during the bankruptcy. But they, see what I mean? Well, no, Phil's still going to get screwed. Phil's still, these idiots don't understand. All right, let me explain this in a nutshell. All right, this year, you tried to ruin my life. You failed miserably. You tried really bad. Who succeeded though? I think Phil succeeded in ruining his own life because he still hasn't recovered and there's no recovery in sight for his bankruptcy, right? Especially when missing, what, four days of streaming or maybe three put him in such a, such a massive, the, you know, bad position.
that he's still recovering from it. Two weeks? Two weeks after. Two weeks after. He's still recovering. So I guess he... The, those dudes on Kiwi Farms that just gossip about him, they failed to ruin his life, but he did it, you guys. He actually deserves all the credit. Sadly, and you made me spend a lot of extra time and money that I shouldn't have had to spend, but you failed miserably, one million percent. You're all, anyone who got involved in that process, you're a fucking- Oh, I also want to ask, what did they lose? Nobody, none of them got exposed for involving themselves in it. All they lost was not having what they thought would happen, happen. That's the only thing. The only thing they had at stake is what they wanted to happen, and then it didn't. So they just moved on. And basically that's it. What did he lose? Well, the Connecticut condo and all his credit for forever, maybe. Nobody knows. Maybe he's never going to get credit again. Because he's now paying apparently some kind of uh, installments for something he bought off of Amazon. And you never know how many things like that he has or that he's still paying off. And that's why he just sh shows up randomly erratic on his streams, just being desperate for money. But he can't tell you why. So we need to invent all these weird scenarios. And this still keeps going on. This is not a thing from back when this video was made, which is, I don't know, uh, not the video was made, but this, this clip was taken. So that's like 20, 2020. Pathetic life failure. You're a laughing stock. You are joking. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Now, those people are a pathetic life failure, not the guy whose bankruptcy we're discussing. Sure. Because you put all of your time and effort to try to ruin my life, and you fail. Ooh. I'm having a better time now than ever on my stream. <laughs> I'm having a better time in my personal life. But you took your shot, uh... and you missed horribly. Stop trying to live with this pipe dream fantasy that some crazy thing is going to happen and fuck me over. Also, cutting promos like this is really bad. Especially if you got people trying to trying to hunt you down, uh, metaphorically, or trying to take you down, it's really bad because you're, in a way, you're kind of provoking him to to keep doing it. Hey, you fucking idiot! You couldn't you couldn't destroy my life now, uh, but you know you you kind of tried and you got close because it made everything difficult for me. So uh, I don't want you to try again. It, that's supposed to be the mindset. Cook your chance. He was supposed to completely, like, avoid it. You failed. And then what happens a year after that? He gets his bank shit leaked. That fucking throws him down another rabbit hole that still hasn't ended. Uh, then, in relation to this, everybody thinks he's a fucking fraud. Everybody thinks he's, um, you know, hiding uh, the champion stuff. He looks guilty as fuck. Everybody thinks, you know, they they spending money on all that shit. People still think he's an alcoholic because they saw how much money he spent on on uh, um, on total wine. And then we get to the interview, which is basically the the whole incriminating segment of him not being able to prove anything. And you got a series of embarrassments that have hurt him way more than they've helped him. Because I can't really think about how the interview has helped him. Outside of the delusional ways he wants to convince you they did. Because that, that's just a cope. You're done. It's over. It's over. You lose. Good day, sir. Now, let's move on and play a fun video game. Yeah. Fuck those idiots. 50 bit Quan, cheers. If the date is a date of a foreclosure, shouldn't you know that? I'm sure I should, and I seriously don't. No one's told me shit. I'm serious about this. I haven't been in the loop about anything all year. No, no lawyers have been contacting me. Uh, I only find out things very, very after the fact, okay? Like, I did get a notice in the mail. He, he's that... talking about this shit like it's somebody else's bankruptcy. Like, he's like, yeah, I, I don't know. They're not gonna tell me. A this thing that is gonna determine a, a large portion of my life, and I'll have to suffer for it for years to come? I don't fucking know. Why, don't, why am I supposed to know? Get out of here. Judge ruled that they can now foreclose. I got that. That's all I got. I didn't, you're serious. I got nothing. So. And the thing is that those people on Kiwi Farms actually saw the info before he did. And they're like, hey, Phil, you don't know about this? And he's like, no. Why am I supposed to fucking know? And you should have just said this I'm has not nothing to do with me. I did everything the right way. I know I did everything the right way. That's why we did it that way. I'm not stupid. So let, again, let the morons 
speculate as much as they want. Okay, on, we on will. These streams right now on we will. farms. Let them all spin and get all excited. Ah, okay. fix it. nothing's gonna happen. Just like with the bankruptcy, nothing's gonna happen. Everything's gonna be fine. I did everything the right way. Let's get on with our lives and let them waste their time. Okay. Oh yeah. I'm not gonna address it anymore. So if you bring it up, I'm just gonna ignore you. Well, time that you had fun with is not wasted. So I'm sorry, Phil. I think you're the only one wasting your time because people are taking this segment and having fun with it. And he wasted his time bitching about people. So there you go. Yeah, Phil. I'm sure we're all never gonna learn anything. Bankrupt, or even being half a million in debt to begin with. Now I'm sure there are the checkers out there who genuinely want to see you lose everything. But the majority of his trolls, especially the ones on YouTube, only want to laugh at your position in life. We're not angry that you had your bankruptcy granted. We're surprised that you went through 14 credit cards to spend on mobile games and somehow came out of it unscathed. People find you fascinating because you're the go-to example of how streamers shouldn't treat their fan base. You act like the world and everybody in it owes you something, but they don't, and they never will. You never put in any actual effort when it comes to streaming. You do the bare minimum for maximum profit. You couple that with your toxic narcissism, along with your shitty gameplay ability, and you get the perfect disaster. You're a car crash for people to point to and laugh at, because you'll get into another one and crash that bitch too. So nobody's upset with the fact that you're still here, because as long as you're streaming, there's going to be people like me who's going to discuss what you're doing and laugh about how much of a failure you are. So you can go on about how we lost and how nothing bad is going to happen to you, but that isn't going to stop people from pointing the finger at you and saying, Wait, are, are you balls, the guy? Right? You know, are you the guy? My dick and balls. It's the guy <laughs> watching his Twitch. Is that really him? Now keeping on topic with court dates and all that other shit, we get quite the pre-stream on December 11, 2020. Oh, I thought this was like the end of the video. There's another like half an hour left. God damn it. <laughs> it was brought to Phil's attention from an undercover detractor that there was going to be a class action lawsuit that was going to be administered mainly towards him in hopes of getting Twitch to change their rules about streamers like Phil begging on their platform. Not only that, but they were going to use DJ Runo's $20 tip as a leading factor for their case while also trying to get DJ Runo to personally represent himself in this stance against Phil. Now clearly this whole thing was a troll, and the guy who sent Phil this message was most likely baiting for a response. Now if Phil was even half as intelligent as he claims to be, then he would have clearly Maybe a quarter. It was and a quarter paid more of attention intelligence. to it. He could have just swept it under the rug, or kept it behind the scenes as he likes to say, and nobody would have even cared. But Phil doesn't think like the rest of us, cause Phil is special. He is. So he talked about it. Oh, all right. I guess I will. There's one thing, guys. I want to talk about publicly on the pre-stream today. It's probably going to shock most of you. I don't know if this actually has any validity. All right. I am literally going to read you a message I received this morning, word for word. Okay. I'm not going to spin it. I'm not going to. I'm just going to read this for you to you, word for word. You guys ready? I just got this email. Check this out. Hello, Phil. I've been undercover among the detractors and doing some private <laughs> investigating. Un <laughs> undercover among the detractors. Oh, man. That man is taking the riskiest task of his career. The Kiwi Farms community is trying to organize a class action lawsuit. Yeah, good job. Indict many good popular luck with that. Dark Side Phil named specifically for solicitation of funds under the false guise of Project Crowd Funding. Essentially, they're using DJ Runo's $20 tip as a means to pressure Twitch to change its tipping policies and create stricter rules, making it more difficult for streamers to ask directly for funds or beg, as they snidely put it. They claim to have a private lawyer with a vested interest, in this case, on the job. It has to be... <laughs> this is so Rikietta fucking... Doing this <laughs> Even yeah, got his name, dude. This is so fucking stupid, man. This is so stupid. What do you think the, the DJ Runo 20 bucks is going to be brought in court? And, and what is he going to do? He's going to sit there and be like... I he promised to play a game and I gave him the money and then he didn't play the game. That's why we should change the laws. I I don't I don't think that's gonna work out, but it's a really fun meme that apparently DSP took like super seriously and he brought it up. So I, I appreciate that. That's very funny. They want DJ Runo to represent their group, but he's unsure whether he wants to be involved. You need to reach out to DJ Runo now and nip this in the butt. You do yeah, that I think uh, I think DJ Runo is in chat. Is that is that true? Was there a thing like that going on? Yeah, he's here. I know he's the real guy too. Worry about, stay strong, Phil. I'll let you know if I have any more relevant information. Was it ever talk about this, or is it just some made up shit? <laughs> okay. 
Holy shit. All right. So let's, All right, let's so talk about this. What do, right? what do you think so? <laughs> let's talk about this. First of all, I couldn't I couldn't even begin to tell you how stupid this is. Why bring it up? Why give uh, it I couldn't I couldn't why why give it any kind of relevance if it's so profoundly stupid you you don't even want to talk about it. Why bring it up? Why discuss it? To to, to tell us how stupid it is? Yeah, it sounds stupid to begin with. You don't need to convince me. To tell you how stupid this is. But this is the level of intelligence of the people who Hello? Oh man. Burnell's and Agar is actually buffering again. To, like, oh, there we go. And do shit. Yeah, that's how nuts they are. Alright, but if this is the level of intelligence of people who are trying to hurt you, why are they successful so often? If, if it, they're stupid people, then why do they manage to hurt you so efficiently and so consistently? Think about it, Phil. Doesn't that make you stupider than them if you're falling for their bullshit? And you're entertaining this bullshit now? Doesn't that make him the idiot? Alright, first of all, let's just pick this apart. A class action lawsuit. Okay, do you know what a class action lawsuit is? I'll explain. I'll explain. It's a lawsuit that's filed. There's usually one, one plaintiff meaning one person who claims they were uh, affected by something, and they file it on behalf of a large group of people who then would try to chime in or jump in on said lawsuit. So, for example, let's say this actually happened to me once before. Ticketmaster is a company that used to sell tickets to everyone on the East Coast. I don't know if they were... I'm going gonna, gonna to skip this preamble because I hate it. Willingly support this service, okay? Oh, okay. You, we're going to put it towards, right? That's That, I guess, would be grounds if someone actually wanted to sue someone and say you were misrepresenting what you were doing raising these funds, right? But in general, a content creator who just comes out and says, hey, I'm a content creator. I put out content. It's free. Come watch. But if you like the content, contribute, support it, and I'll continue to make it. As long as they're, they're still making it in a reasonable amount of time, then there's no reason at all that anyone could even sue. There's, there's no grounds. Okay. Yeah, so but any idiot would actually think that this has any legal merit. Because this is not about this. This is about that specific uh, untitled goose game th thing. And I don't think that would have worked in court either. But he's choosing to ignore the actual case. But maybe he's going to talk about it. Let's see. Is hilariously stupid. Okay. Now, as for this DJ Runo twenty dollar tip, I'm going to be honest with everyone. I have no idea what this is about. Oh, he doesn't even know what it is. DJ Runo used to be a frequenter of the streams and used to contribute. Uh, yeah. And I know they're not here anymore. I guess at some point there was something that the detractors blew into a giant thing. I don't even know what it is. He I don't doesn't remember. even know. I honestly, God, he's a God, small guy. He doesn't even remember. know. So, see, people are calling him DJ Refund. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> DJ was there refund. something that happened? That's hot. Where he wanted a refund for a tip. I don't even know. That's what I mean. Like to me, <clears throat> this is just so stupid. What DJ refund tipping twenty dollars for untitled goose game? <laughs> DJ refund. That's what people are saying. <laughs> okay. You mean the game uh, I play? Oh, okay. So we got an official statement from DJ refund. Here it is. Uh, big ups. I have never been contacted to do such a thing. So it literally doesn't exist. And he's, like, entertaining it like it's a thing happening. Uh, somebody fed him a bunch of bullshit. TJ Runo left after you messed That's with so $20 great. where you didn't buy Untitled Goose Game. But I did buy Untitled Goose Game and I played it. So what are you talking about? <laughs> it's so funny. I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't even you know, know I mean? either. Like, do you, do you I don't know. From my perspective... I'm a guy who every day I'm here, I, I play new games. I just do. So people contribute. They come and go. I don't even know what you're talking about. I really don't. So apparently the detractors, because this is what they do. They take little innocuous things that happen and they blow them up into like big things um, out of nowhere for no reason. And then they act like they're some big deal. So I guess when people, I'm trying to piece this together when people are telling me in the stream chat over a year ago, right? Because this was, wasn't this last year or maybe even before then. 
He doesn't even realize how talking about this is actually making him look worse. Because how are you going to tell me that somebody is going to go to court and, and make a big-ass uh, suit, right? A, a lawsuit. And you're going to be involved in it because one of the guys is using you as a proof that this is, is bad to do. And you don't even know what they're talking about? You don't even, don't even know the accident, the, the, the thing that they're talking about? It actually makes you look like a stupid guy. Should have just kept quiet then. Um. Basically, from what I'm understanding, DJ and now we got like half money half to play on top, like half knowing stuff. From what I am to understand, do you understand or not? Can we have a definitive? He knows what he's talking about, or he doesn't know what he's talking about. Title Goose Game, and I didn't play it at first, so he got upset. But then I eventually played it. So it's that simple. All right? It's just that simple. And for me to think that something that happened over a year ago, I guess, is something that's still pertinent in the minds of these obsessive weirdos. On now a we got to like deflect. Farms, it blows my oh, fucking yeah. mind. Let's deflect. Talk it about does. everything like, else. People are still thinking. This is the least thing in my mind from anything that I've thought about this entire year. I mean, I haven't thought about Untitled Goose Game in a year. So why the fuck would anyone even be talking about this or care about it? This is how crazy these fucking people are. Now, what's hilarious about this, I'm reading this email. Oh, now it's right. hilarious. It must apparently. be Nick Re Rekita or whatever doing this. He's the attorney. No, he's not. He's not him. He, the, we, how do you know? Anywhere involved, he wouldn't touch this with a million foot pole. Why not? Because Nick is not a fucking idiot. Yeah, because right? it doesn't make Nick sense. He's an actual lawyer. And intelligent people don't do stupid things. But so, but wait, the actual lawyer told you you committed fraud on your, on your bankruptcy. Is he an idiot then? Because he he talked about him right when he was debunking the bankruptcy. He talked about him. Talked about like apparently like some internet lawyers are looking at this. So now he's an actual real lawyer and not just a fake internet lawyer who makes you look bad. Really? That's how dumb. We're flipping on Nick like uh, like there's no tomorrow. These people are. They assume that it must be Nick. Why are you talking about Nick? Nick would not be involved in this. He's going to do stuff that he feels is going to profit him or, or benefit him. Being in a frivolous lawsuit is not going to benefit him or his law firm. All right? It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Okay? As for, did we want DJ Runo to represent the group? What the fuck are you talking about? One guy who sent a $20 tip specifically asking for a game. The game didn't get played right away. Then, if I remember, because I don't know I'm starting to remember, because people are saying this was on a Minecraft stream. Oh, and now, I guess oh, you see this? Now he's starting to remember. It's becoming clear. But when he started talking about it, it's like, oh, from what I am to understand, like, somebody gave me money or something? I, I don't even know. Personated him? Who is, who is even DJ Runo? Who is he? Huh? I remember he, like, used to be somebody. Same I don't know stuff. what happened to him. And, like, like it wasn't really him. Like, someone was impersonating DJ Runo. Oh, is that so? Stuff. Like, oh, you know, you're an asshole or whatever for not playing the game. Really? And so I went on a rant saying if that's really him saying that, that's fucked up. You know, who oh, are yeah. This is really messed up. That's, that's why, like, he thinks people love him so much, his fans, that the moment somebody, of one of them starts calling him out, they must be being impersonated. Right? They, that can't physically be them. It's like, dude, I know you love me. What happened to you? You're, you're talking back to me. You're contradicting yourself. What? This guy essentially went to detractors to try to get ammo so he could do a false report against Twitch against me. He can go fuck himself. I don't ever want to hear from him ever again. Oh. That he fucking never, ever. Hey, we remembered who he was. Not ever again. I don't need support from an asshole like that. I don't. I don't need ass uh, an asshole backhandedly supporting me when in reality all he's doing is trying to get something out of me. And then whenever things don't go his way instead of being basically a decent human turns into a complete piece of shit and tries to get me in trouble. Go fuck yourself, DJ Runo. Seriously, oh, you hear that? Don't ever come back. Oh, no man. one wants you here, especially me. And then later on, people- No one- Wow! Now he, he's talking on behalf of everybody. No one wants you here. Not only did you insult me and offend me personally, nobody else want to see you here. Okay, I'm, I, I, I talk on their behalf. Because they are too stupid to have their own opinions and question stuff. That's why they're my fans, by the way. Shout out to them. Anyway, 
And I was like, all right, well, my bad then. If it Big was, ups, uh, was Lord Kane triple six um, for the two months, are, dude. You know, again, just sending stuff and expecting stuff to a streamer, you know, you shouldn't do that. And then I ended up playing the title Goose Game anyway, so no one cared. This is, this is coming like, and yeah, Eternal Napalm, to my knowledge, this was over a year ago, right? This was over a year ago um, that this happened. <laughs> But anyway, nobody you know I mean? wants you so here. I get this email not this only morning, do I, I not want like, you here, nobody wants you. What? Like, first of all, class action lawsuit is hilarious. So you, that's even the worst way to go about it. If you were going to do an actual direct lawsuit, okay, you would do it because you actually feel like you've been wronged in a legal way by someone. Doing a class action lawsuit would imply that there's a giant group of people who were b befrauded, all right, or excuse me, defrauded by someone and there's somehow going to be legal evidence of that but there you can't have a mass defrauding with a content creator on the internet who's saying i'm giving you my content for free <laughs> um yeah big ups lord kane triple six i might steal the dj refund name so whenever i'm making music off of dsp he'd have a blast from the past yeah that's not a bad idea <laughs> you see what i'm saying um yeah dude we all know this is bullshit and it seems to me like he's the last guy to figure it out. That is, is fucking fake. It's so easy for him to say he things like this because there is no face or real name attached. If this person met him or was part of his content even once in a semi-positive way, he would never dare say these things. Poozy. Uh, I think as long as it's on the internet, he would just shit talk him too. I don't think it, it matters if you got a name or face or whatever. He would just shit talk him for... For the sake of it, because like, why not? If if, if this were that's Kingstar. just who he is. And I'm but if there was any kind of threat to him, just like you saw with Keemstar, he he went full on pussy mode when Keemstar jumped on the call. Of course. Starter, someone said, if I raise this amount of money, I will produce this product, and everyone crowdfunds it. They raise the money and they don't produce the product. Now you have grounds to go after someone. That's not what streaming is. It never has been. There's no direct promise of anything besides, I just want to keep streaming, right? So, this is just hilarious that any idiot would actually think this has merit and to even, like, talk about it is, is, is lunacy, actually. It's just insanity. It's stupidity. And the fact that Kiwi Farms is talking about it, I mean, that just proves the level of intelligence of the people over there. You have to be a... By the way, those people are so stupid. They are so stupid that they managed to hack into his bank account and reveal all his spending. They're that stupid. Imagine how stupid you have to be to know how to do that and to do that. They're also so stupid that they managed to hurt him personally on a consistent basis. Imagine being that stupid that you figure out how you can do it. Wow, that's some real stupidity, am I right? Genuine nitwit to think that this would actually have any legal merit. Now, of course, nothing really came out of this whole lawsuit business besides Phil spurking out about absolutely nothing. But that's not the only reason for wanting to bring up this specific pre-stream. You see, there's this thing called Line App. It's basically like a messaging service like there this. There we go. Skype. And the people who make guilds or factions on WWE Champions will often use Line App as a way of communicating. Now, what does this have to do with DSP? Well, apparently, the use Line App you need to have a number registered and verified to make an account, meaning that you have to get a verification code from your SMS text messages which means nobody will have access to that type of information except Phil. So when a well-known detractor, TJ Gamebox, did some snooping and used Phil's personal phone number to see if he had an account, he found that not only did he already have an account set up, the account linked to the same handle he had on WWE Champions. Wow, now, most of that's a quinky was dink. By Kiwi Farms, thanks to a post made by LXB. He also linked the video along with this to prove that none of it was photoshopped. Oh yeah, that's uh, what well, that's trying to log in with that with that phone, huh? And it's gonna it's gonna send uh, a message, is it? Pretty much. Oh no, it's it's just proving that it's him. Playing the game 100, percent and when confronted about it, Phil could only use the only self defense he knows, which was to play stupid. So debunked DSP fan cheered. He says, just to let you know, if you come across it, the Line app is a new detractor meme. Okay. It's a meme. What the hell is the Line app? <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck that is. Dude, so. what's the what's down from the rafters? Right. I don't know. Sure, if you say so. The line app is the new detractor meme. 
the the two best DSP impersonations, or uh, I wouldn't say impersonations, of uh, DSP behaviors are when he is pretending not to know when what something is called, and pretending he doesn't care about something. When we we get like the fake laugh, and it's like, ah, who fucking cares? <laughs> Okay. Well, I, I don't even app. know. I want to be, well, here you go. Add me online app. Apparently, this is the detractor me. Apparently, yeah. So I used to watch this. So you don't play videos. I believe you're a terrible person. I decided to give you a chance and watch you on live stream. I have to say I was right. Oh, so wow. What a, what a fucking meme. A literal meme. A literal meme. Somebody troll tipping him with a literal meme. Hey, Phil, I thought you were a piece of shit, but you actually turn out to be like the coolest guy ever. Wow. What the fuck? I'm your it's biggest fan now. Me. Very nice. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you fucking idiot. Yeah, this okay. laugh. This is what I'm All talking right. about. The, the Bung DSP fan, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I really don't. He, he doesn't says, even know what you're talking about, Johnny. is registered as they call me DSP on Line app. Line app was used by some on D WWE mobile game meme. What? <laughs> what the fuck? You're still... First of all... You're still on this mobile game. Shit. There's still... <laughs> and then eventually he admits that he's still playing it. So, yeah, have, have the, the benefit of hindsight on this one. When you know in 2023 he does an interview and admits he's still playing it. Still! And now this it's like still... super ridiculous, right? You're accusing him of something that has no chance of ever happening. It's so silly that he's laughing in your face. It never happened. It's not even real. Thing. We're at the end of 2020. This is still a thing. Good God. And line app. I don't... I can't even understand this. Let me read this again. Your number that was doxxed is registered as they call me DSP on the line app. The line right. app was used by some on the WWE mobile game meme. I still don't understand it because I don't know what the line app is. Well... My number? You mean my phone number? What does my phone number have to do with an app? I think I'm just asking too many questions. Like, who cares? <laughs> right? I think I'm asking way too many questions here. That's He's my... asking too many questions uh, when, when he knows what the answer is. That's his problem. Problem. Because he got to pretend like he doesn't know the answer. And he doesn't even know the question, which is where it gets really funny. I should just say, okay, it's a de stupid detractor thing. I don't yes. know what the fuck you're talking about, but if yeah. someone's mentioning line app, I guess it's the new detractor meme and I can ignore it. All right, fair enough. I get it. I don't care. And I'm going to have nothing to do with it. Okay? <laughs> Absolutely nothing to do with it. I'm just not going to pay any attention to it. Thanks for telling me. And that's enough of that nonsense. Now I don't have to pay attention to it anymore. And now with this overwhelming amount of evidence stacked against him, and Phil not providing any proof to clear his name other than playing stupid, it was starting to make some people who was following DSP wonder where their money was really going to. So of course, Phil made an attempt at damage control and stated that anyone who mentioned anything about Line App was going to be banned from his check. Okay, a few things. Alright guys, just to will. forewarn everyone. Few stupid detractor memes today. I don't know what the fuck that half of them even mean. Like someone tried to explain why on the stream earlier today, and I was just so confused. I don't even care. <laughs> so there's some idiots who are trying to do detractor memes here on the stream today. They did it for half of my stream earlier today, and they keep fucking annoying me with it on stream earlier today. And I apologize for that. So if we if we see the stupid detractor memes popping up, I'll do my best to take care of it. Um, but I don't really even understand what it is. But some people have been annoying me. Now it seems like there's another meme where people are now are now harassing me about the forums or something. I don't care. I just don't care. I'm here to play games and have fun. I'm not going to listen to what the idiots are saying on their own fucking streams and their own garbage content because it doesn't mean anything. It's pointless, okay? So if I see something here in the stream that's trying to derail and talk about shit that has nothing to do with the content on my stream or anything we're talking about, I'm gonna, you know, I'm just going to take care of it myself. All right? I'm just saying up front. I'm not going to put up with that shit. And if you notice that, he mentioned getting harassed on the forums. That's because some of the people who really believe in DSP have now started to see the writing on the wall. Oh yeah, you love it when that happens. He's been telling them on screen, causing DSP to respond back in locked threads. I'm not going to respond to anything that I've previously addressed, so the only new thing here is this line app that people trolled my chat about today, and even told me about this thread specifically. I know nothing about it. I've never used it, and I certainly never made any account in it. The fact that my private info was doxxed in 2014, but somehow people think that anything that was made public in that doxing is evidence of anything, is pretty insanely stupid. 
Oh, that's a huge spin. And if he wasn't too stupid, maybe he could have gotten away with it, but he can't in this case, because for your phone to be linked to that app, you need to actually confirm it. You need to, to take the code that comes, and you need to input it into the app. So it, it doesn't really just work like that. Nobody can just make a, an account based on something that they don't have access to. People have used DSP, DSP Gaming, Darkside Phil, they call me DSP, among many, many other variations to register me for every single website, mailing list, app, and service on the internet in an attempt to either one. Impersonate me and make me look bad or two. Sign me up for tons of shit to troll me. Same with the phone number that was doxxed and my email addresses. Your phone number is linked to a line profile proven to belong to you unless someone hacked into the app's database or someone hacked stole your phone, created Absolutely, an yes. and left it without yes. you knowing about it. Absolutely. The and this is really interesting because he wrote it in like all caps. Line account has the same uh, not all caps but uh, bold original name of the mobile game profile. Right. This app is a known avenue used for communicating in that game. You claim you don't know anything about any of this. You're right, I don't, and I have no idea what this is supposed to mean. Oh, wow. Just because an account exists doesn't mean I made it or that it's mine, nor does it prove it ever had association with this WWE mobile game. You have to make so many logic jumps to even make this some kind of circumstantial evidence. Is there a con- You have to make so many logic jumps to listen to the interview and believe that that guy is actually innocent. You Not only do you need to make logic jumps, you need to straight up want to believe him. And you still might have a very hard time. Conversation somewhere that proves I used line app Oregon that it was used with people playing this game. Does the conversation prove that it's actually me? This is the same incredibly flawed evidence that was tried to prove I somehow had a Discord account that never proved anything at all. Because even with entire pages of conversation, not once did anything have association with me besides the login name, they call me DSP. People make shit up on the internet to try to hurt me daily. Remember when a chat mod of mine pretended to be a female for an entire year and created an okay. entire new internet persona for themselves to catfish people in my stream chat and try to undermine my bots to get me banned from Twitch? Oh, Remember that's pretty funny. Dating cat, and someone across the globe pretended that I was lying about her and actually using my viewers' contributions to hire them as an escort and fly them across the planet to spend time with me. Um, I do remember something else, though. First of all, I remember that those people, the, the escort people, were not trolls. They were just a malicious party that wanted to fuck with them. I also remember that when Kat was visiting, he was crying about being sick and then going out on staycations with her and buying her stuff. I remember that. So that already makes him look disingenuous. I wonder why he skipped over all these times he's been disingenuous, but when people were disingenuous towards him, he wants to mention it. It's almost like we're, we're pushing a specific angle here. I don't know. Remember when this year someone called into my bankruptcy hearing and pretended to be one of my creditors to try and get personal information about my finances live on the internet? Or how about daily when I get fake tips impersonating my regular stream viewers that are actually stolen credit cards that someone is buying on a daily basis to do this and make sure I get charged back later? Those are felonies being committed on a daily basis. All of those All the things cops. are far more insane All the feds. than believing that someone is making fake accounts to try and troll me on chat apps, especially when, again, my info was doxxed in 2014. And the kicker here, you don't even know that I still use the same phone number, and I certainly wouldn't have announced that I'd changed it to the world for fear that these kinds of things would persist if someone found out the new one. You have drank the Kool-Aid, and oh with zero God. actual evidence, but just a ton of circumstantial stuff that still proves nothing, you've condemned me. How about this? Wake up from this insanity and mind your own damn business. And, and we get, we skip to gaslighting. It's like he's telling you you're straight up crazy for believing this, it, this shit that actually scientifically does make sense. You can't separate. Literally makes fucking sense. If you take all the evidence, and you take... On the other side is his statement, right? His claims that are... So what, what he wants you to believe is this. He plays that specific video game, mobile game, WWE Champions. He does play it in a casual capacity. Despite being addicted to mobile games for years, uh, he got over this addiction, which is really commendable. 
knowing that absolutely it's true. Of course it is. He also wants you to believe that somebody who dislikes him has created a fake account on this game to impersonate him and claim that it's actually him. And they've also spent hundreds and thousands of dollars on that specific video game that, keep in mind, he does play and used to be addicted to. They spend that much money to make him look bad. And on top of that, they made a fake uh, leaks of his bank accounts where they faked a bunch of transactions that happen at places that are surprisingly close to where he lives in places that he frequents, such as pet stores or alcohol shops or other such places that he's been to before. That's what he wants you to believe. And what simply the trolls want you to believe is to look at all those dots and how they connect and just make up your own mind. And I, I think that's going to be much, much easier than trying to buy into whatever shit he's trying to peddle. Conspiracy from fact. Move on and stop watching my content like so many already surely have. I don't have time to deal with daily delusions of a mob of gullible people who are intent on believing anything at all. And of course, we finish with the DSP cliche. With the DSP trope of, if you don't believe me, stop watching my shit. If you're watching my shit, you always gotta believe me. I, I don't have space in my streams for people that question me. ...about me for a laugh, but don't make a post like this on the site again, ever. This isn't the only example of one of Field's fans calling him out on the forums. There was another person, more, more, more. Now oh yeah, who this I remember is. that. They are a adamant defender of Field and his shenanigans. Not only that, they are also the person who draws more Field's legitimate pre-stream art. And what they was on Kiwi Farms on the YouTube comment section, Moore was there to defend DSP from any accusations he was going through. But apparently, this new information about the line app was enough for Moore to finally start questioning Phil instead of blindly believing him to be an innocent victim of troll behavior. They had a whole back and forth on the forums, and Phil has since deleted the posts. But James I was actually wondering how how much would it take for uh, Moore and Moria here, because I'm familiar with that person from the forums. I was I was wondering how much it has to take for them to just finally kind of come to terms with that that he's a fucking fraudster and a scammer and he gives a fuck about nothing but himself and benefiting himself. Still has a video archive in the discussion they had. Now I know you all have your split opinions about James the Lister, so I'll leave a link to that video in the description for any of those people who care enough to look further into it. To summarize it though. It was basically Phil doing his best to avoid giving any direct answers or showing any confirmation that the account wasn't his. Then proceeded to lock the discussion after one or more to never bring this topic up again. Yeah, well, there no we go. No matter how much damage control, no matter how much you tried to avoid the conversation, people weren't letting go of this newfound discovery so easily. Fifty bit big boy, I don't know anything about this stupid line app. I don't know how it works. People are are telling me things about it. I know nothing about it. All I know is I have nothing to do with it at all. I, I don't have an account on fucking line. I never did anything with it. I don't know anything about it. So whoever did it, did it in my name. If it exists, I can't confirm it exists or doesn't exist. Sounds like someone made an account in my name to try to fucking screw me over just like Well, this. I guess it was me. I snuck into his house and I took his phone and I unlocked it with a password that he has. If he does have one. And I made an account and I verified it with the app. Okay? It was me, you guys. I'm sorry. And everything else that's happened this year, I know nothing about it. But it sounds like you're a conspiracy theorist, doesn't it? Big boy, you have to enter a code from an SMS message when you download the app. The troll has. Uh, it's it's also really wholesome and heartwarming to see a guy who thinks that his Amazon packages were stolen by somebody. Uh, you know, remember the neck phones, and and then he's calling somebody a conspiracy theorist. The guy that is so paranoid, he's inventing reasons in his head why he should be paranoid. People constantly stealing from him, people constantly trying to fuck him over, coming after him, and he's calling other people conspiracy th theorists. Your text message, I contact the authorities if I were you. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just, uh, seriously, like there's no way to dupe one of these app companies into thinking that you are using a phone number that you're not. Right? Oh yes. Or, they did that no too. There's no possible way that... In the six years since my cell phone's been doxxed that I changed my number, right? No way that possible that I would have possibly Did you, though? It, right? Anyway, I'm not even gonna waste time on this anymore because it's so stupid. Um, and if, if he changed his number, though, uh, why was it so easy for somebody to try and log in and then the confirmation was sent to that number if that number is, is inactive? I don't know, Show man. your phone and dunk on the conspiracy theorists. My God, you're an idiot. I mean, I mean it now. You're an idiot. 
Yes, because showing my phone totally couldn't possibly give away stuff that people were used to hurt. What are you gonna give away, bro? The fact that DSP couldn't do something as simple as showing his phone to display his innocence clearly proves otherwise. Nobody who's being accused of something will willingly go out of their way to make themselves look even more guilty by not providing evidence and lashing out at people who only wanted to get a genuine answer out of them. But he would rather stick his head in the sand and try his best to ignore everything, all while claiming he's going through chargeback after chargeback. Like this fucking tweet right here, claiming that Brunel Enterprises is in the red. But let's all remember what he told us. DSP is not running a business. So there is a lot of positivity going on behind the scenes. The problem is all the work that I put into this this this, this business. Entity, this oh yeah, I I love this one. This business. Well, uh, it's well, it's not a it's not a business because like uh, it's, it's very not nice. A business. This it's, is the most consistent guy. Because it's not. I don't own a business. I don't legally own a business anywhere. Um, being self-employed, this self-employment legacy. Yeah, wants to <laughs> self-employment legacy. Control out there who's pulling this insane long con, and somehow has private information that only fear will have. And, we should and it's like, that's the thing. If you're going to pull a long con like this, it requires a lot of dedication and, of course, money if you're going to spend it on that fucking game. But the, the, the most interesting thing for me is, like, how are you actually hurting the guy if he is really innocent? You just make him look bad. He makes himself look bad on a daily basis. What are you doing that is that special that costs so much time and effort and money? So that's, that's another reason why I don't believe it's anybody else but him. I'm 100% certain that it's him. And I, I can't be convinced otherwise, especially seeing how, how really not unconvincing all of his arguments are. Because if he had like one argument that really made you think and really made you doubt everything, that, then it would be different. It would be somehow you, you, you have space for like speculation and discussion and, and doubt. But in this case, it's like, Here's a bunch of evidence, and here is his word saying that he didn't do it. So, I'm sorry, dude. You just look guilty as fuck. I believe that all of this evidence is clearly fabricated, even though it's proven that Phil has a history of terrible spending habits, especially when it comes to gaming. Let's not forget the money matches or the traveling expenses. Hell, let's not forget the fact that he's admitted to spending money on mobile games, especially Hearthstone. So, in conclusion, his and not, not just, uh, I, I want to take it the next step, because he didn't just admit spending money on, on mobile games. Because I've done that too, I spend money on mobile games, hell yeah. On shitty, like, football manager simulators. But, he, he was talking about having an actual problem, right? He had a dependency, he got an addiction to the game. Which makes you believe this nonsense even more. Cause like, come on, everybody spends some money on some kind of stupid shit every once in a while. But he's talking about like he had a serious issue. But it's fucked. And if he truly thinks that anyone with half a brain would be dumb enough to believe that bullshit, then ah oh, fuck, never mind. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, wait. What, what do we got here? I need to read this one. Not, not just because it's like the to believe that bullshit. The last yeah. thing. Okay, so this is DSP's Discord, right? We got, they call me, no, we got Dark Side Phil, who says, for real, if this account was really mine, and I need to physically zoom in for this, and switch, switch the layout so people can see it. Okay, hold on. If this account was really mine, I would have long ago paid for another legit account. Parentheses, they are sold online. Oh, he knows. He knows surprisingly a lot about something he got nothing to do with. Uh, or paid another player of the game for a screenshot of theirs. There is no way to prove an account is mine or not with just a screenshot. That's why the entire thing was always bullshit from the start. But has he tried providing a screenshot? I know there's many people that are not going to believe whatever he's going to try and present as evidence. But if it, in fact that wasn't him... And it was destroying his reputation to the point where he needs to have like a five hour interview explaining how it's not him. I personally would put in some more effort to prove that that wasn't me. So anyways, that's why the entire thing was always bullshit from the start. The moment they asked for the screenshot, I knew something was up. And then we got Swaggins. Um, a really extremely high IQ, extremely intelligence individual. Uh, that's completely valid, but I do feel like being put out on, on the spot like that 
in front of everyone and you had actually tried something, I really do wonder what people would say. Other than he didn't show Craig because he knows he's guilty. So they're talking about the interview and how he did show absolutely no proof. His proof was claiming that he's going to consider showing proof. Imagine being charged with something like that. And you're a public personality and it's destroying your reputation. Imagine this happening. And you know you're, you're not guilty. And you show up somewhere to defend yourself and to say that you're not guilty. You show up there to clear your name. And you got absolutely no proof to show that you're innocent? Like, not one, not even, like, uh, anything. Not anything. Not even, like, fake proof. You just had nothing. Ah. <sighs> right. So we continue. Not everyone would believe it either way. But I really do think... Uh, I really do speculate on how it could have gone. And then we got a non-mod, who I have no idea who that is. Uh, who says, yeah, it's hard to imagine anyone ever being satisfied, even if he had shown it then and there. But at least he fucking tried. Why, why does it matter? Well, at least he gave it a shot. If you say things like that for everything, you can say this about everything in life. Yeah, I wonder, but nobody would have believed me anyway. You fucked. And then DSP, of course, because he needs to push that narrative. You got nothing to do with this. It would have 100% gone badly, no matter what I did. This guy had it out for me from the start. Wow, and now it's like, now we're flip-flopping, we're contradicting the narrative that he's also trying to push. The narrative that the interview itself was fair. And now he's bringing up, the interview was actually never fair. He had it out for me from the start. So I am the victim, I have been prosecuted, persecuted, condemned, unfairly, and I'm not going to defend myself, because it's not going to work out anyways, okay? So why even try? I'll just look guilty until the end of time and say that it doesn't matter if I'm guilty or not. If you believe me, just stick with me. That's, that's great. And then we got, it would have sprouted 10,000 more theories probably. And then DSP is like, of course it would have. It's happened before with other things. And that's because there's so many people that are beyond, what does this say? Beyond using logic? I mean, my guy, Mr. Swagaccini, the whole thing is about how people use logic to prove it's him, and he's just calling them idiots instead of actually proving something. Oh, so that was it. That was the beggar's journey. I'm glad we went on this no. long and uh, very informative journey. Hopefully, we're going to get a, to see a, uh, a new one soon. This, like, legitimately ha has, like, 15 parts, 17 parts. And they're growing in length, too. Because the first, the first 10 were around, like, 30, 35, 40 minutes. And now we got, like, hour 40 minutes. There we go. We're balling. Oh, and I, I think that's it for now. Because I got uh, that being said in four and a half hours. So I'm going to clock out now, go do something else. Um, yeah, thanks, everybody, for stopping by. See you around next time, and peace the fuck out. Let me play something for you. Hey, you social media trolls, y'all can suck on these, these, these nuts. That's what's up. We'll be home.